would you like me to call you? Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. And now I just need to pull up both Twitch and this Final Fantasy. Twitch still says you're not live. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll fix itself in a couple of It'll minutes. do that. Oh. There we go. Now it says you're live. Okay. Two minutes, we'll get started. Let's see. Okay, I got my notes up. Twitch app is working. Good. That is good. This is good, but you are bad, as Rolf would have gone as high as five turnips. Hello, SB and Yugman. How you guys doing? Welcome. We are about to get started very shortly. Okay. <sighs> thundering footsteps that you heard in the background just now that actually you probably didn't hear was Cole getting back to his computer so that he could start with me excuse me I am now situated in my chair but my mic is not situated on your mouth Once you get it all comfy, just there let go. me know. Good? Yep. Okay. We can start. Hello, SB and how are you? And music's done. Let's get going. Hey, Dad. What are you guys doing? Everything? I'm broadcasting. Oh, okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have them directly here with me, but I finally did it. I bought some shaded spectacles on the market board. They were 300,000 gil for a high quality version. And while I'm not using them for my monk glamour because the blindfold is just too iconic at this point, I'd like to believe I have no regrets. My wallet tells me otherwise, but I'm sure I'll find some use for them. How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, the stream edition. Last time, we finished out the first set of Alliance Raids in the Crystal Tower, 
and uh, started doing some stuff for the Miners Guild for levels 50 to 60. But this time, we uh, have another matter to take care of here in Ulda because there is a quest right over here, The Man in Black. And uh, as long as that, if that's not a movie reference, it could be a reference to the fact that Odin is still up and kicking. So we need to investigate that because we know how to deal with Odin already. So let's go see if that's what this is all about or if it's something else out of character. I know it's something else, but in character, would I really know that? Maybe, nope. maybe not, probably not. But then this quest with Vyman will be doing soon enough as well, just uh, as a bonus episode. Quest with that Aldan citizen, I have no idea. I've kind of already got Monk, so Samurai would be a little redundant, I think. But this is the quest that I'm looking for right here. So, Miss last stream, what did we think of uh, Circus Tower and World of Darkness? I liked both of them a lot better than Labyrinth of the Ancients, mostly because of the fact that I could actually see during both of them. Um, <laughs> between the two of them, probably my favorite one was Circus Tower. Um, liked the atmosphere, liked the music. I actually got the orchestrian role when I did the uh, quest for Gift of the Archmages overnight. Well, last night I did, I did all three of the uh, pearls that you need for that. Um, I have them right here, Pearl of the Labyrinth, Tower, and Darkness. So uh, when I did it, I actually got the orchestrian role for the battle theme from Crystal Tower, or from Circus Tower, so I was uh, happy about that part. Um, what else did I get? I think I got a uh, minion out of the whole deal, too. Yeah, here it is. I got a Puff of Darkness <laughs> from the World of Darkness one, so we, we won't be using that, but uh, I just thought it was pretty funny that I got that. So. I ended up getting the wind-up onion night last stream, which made me very happy. Mm. Also, never regret glamour. Nope, nope. I will. Uh, <laughs> I will definitely try not to. I don't personally regret it because I made enough money from getting all the punching gloves and stuff uh, sold on the board. So, you know. Last night, completed MSQ on your main, so she's ready for Shadowbringers. Need to grind gear for a while, but still. Well, that's good. That's good. So that means you'll be ready once it all drops, as long as you get gear for it. So that will, should put it's you in good shape. It's just unfortunate that we won't be able to join you for Shadowbringers, or at least my brother won't be, because he's going cold turkey. Yep. But if Cole continues, he'll maybe be able to join you. Which, honestly, the entire problem with me continuing is money. Mm. <laughs> if I could, I would. Mm. But food's expensive. Music's great. Yeah, it really is. I, I really like the, the music from Circus Tower, personally. It's probably one of the reasons why I liked it better than the other two. Um, the music in all music of them was good, was it's just that Circus famous. Towers is pretty iconic, so... What'd you say, Cole? The music in the Circus Tower, and by extension the World of Darkness, was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Minions used to only be one chest with a 10% drop rate, and everyone had to roll for it at once. So I'm guessing now the, the drop rate is different, so you, uh, mul maybe multiple people could get them, or something to that effect. And hello, Conker. It's going good for us. How's it going for you? Let's take the quest, the man in black, and ignore the face over here. He's he's not important right now. <laughs> he will be, but not yet. So what are you doing here in Alda if you're part of Gridania's tabloid? What kind of a rumor? A black vehicle with mechanical soldiers. Okay, unless Odin turned into, like, Meta Ridley or some shit. I don't think that's what we're dealing with here. Unless Odin turned into Meta Ridley. <laughs> I've never seen... I mean, I, I know mechanical soldiers look like, because I've been to Castrum Sentry, but other than that... I think people sleep on how good the Cloud of Darkness theme is in the DS remake. It is. It's really, really good in the DS. In, in all of the remakes, really. In the DS remake, the PSP remake, it's really good. I'm, I'm a big fan. I actually like that one better than the one that was in the dungeon for World of Darkness here. The one in the dungeon was good, too. It was fitting for what was happening, but I, <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over how good the theme is in the DS version, personally, so... Well, yeah, if it's Garly and Weaponry, that's not good. They have been bolstering their military lately, so... Okay, so what do you need me to do? It's near Black Brush. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Quest accepted! Look at that, that's a fancy logo. Wonder what that's from. Perhaps we'll never know. <laughs> Doing all right, fine. I'm trying to start your Java homework since you haven't had much time to use your computer. Ah, gotcha, Conquer. Well, hopefully I don't distract you too much um, from doing your Java homework. 
I'm hoping at some point, once I'm done with my current business degree, that I uh, can go back and start doing some classes for programming and computer science myself. But uh, I'll let you guys know how that goes once I actually get a chance to do it. Right now, the only programming I've ever done is a few little GBA uh, homebrew hacking things that... Uh, they're not very good and they're not public, so... <laughs> Uh, we'll worry about that in, in due time. I recall one very particular one that pissed me off to no end. One that pissed you off? One. No, I really don't, actually. The one you were working on for the longest oh, time. Oh, okay, yeah, that I, I didn't finish, yeah. I'm, I'm sad. sad you didn't finish I've been, I've been cool. thinking about going back and working on it before I do a playthrough of the game for uh, Twitch and YouTube and stuff. It might take that a little while, though. Someone's playing random notes by the market board in Kugana. You want to stab them with their own recorder? <laughs> that would be uh, very difficult to do. I don't think a recorder is a very sharp instrument. And it could be a sharp instrument if you hit somebody hard enough with it. I mean, I guess. I'm not incorrect. <laughs> Bulma, what's the maximum height I have to drop you from for you to hit terminal velocity? Silence. <laughs> be leaving in a half an hour before the stream ends for your brother's house for party. Oh, nice, Conker. Good. Good. Hope you enjoyed the party, then. That's good. Alright, let's keep an eye out for a suspicious-looking vehicle with a bunch of potentially Garlean weaponry following behind it. Hmm. Not exactly any main roads out here in the desert, but... I think I found the vehicle. Though it doesn't look like any vehicle I've ever seen. Y you know, at least in character. Out of character, it's very familiar, and so is this gentleman. Need a little help there, friend? Looks like your uh, car broke down? What's a garage? Is that some kind of weird shop workshop place i mean the closest one i know is in ishgard so there's a garage in, Is in ishgard for airships oh, sky steel manufactory i mean shit just bring the car to sid you'll be fine you can fix anything. <laughs> yeah but sid left for urgent business someplace else i don't even know where the hell to find him at this point cole's right anything can be a sharp weapon if you use it right yeah i know let's let's just look at john wick for an example he killed the guy with a pencil Mm -hmm. Fucking pencil. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite scene in that movie. <laughs> well, you're in Central Thanalan there, my friend. It's uh, not too far from the main jaunt, but really, where do you hail from then? A land far to the west, through several dimensional portals. Probably. Uh. <laughs> This is this car thing is unlike anything I've ever seen here, man. But I mean, I have a friend who might be able to handle it. Yeah, yeah, it'd probably be Sid. Sid's a good friend of mine. He should be able to help you out with any kind of mechanical monstrosity. Wait, there's you know Sid? Wait, you 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 said you don't know where Eorzea is, but you know Sid? Are you from Garlia by any chance? I mean, he doesn't have the jewel thing, but his hair could be covering it up. I mean... Oh, God. <laughs> well, my name is Jimmy. What's your name? Noct. Okay, fair enough. Then I'll call you Noct, even though your you know name is Noctis. You've had to do this before? Not exactly a fairy tale beginning for your start in Eorzea, huh there, Noctis? In case you were wondering, this episode's going to be full of references to Final Fantasy XV, and I literally can't help it. It just sort of comes out. I mean, you want to talk about references to Final Fantasy XV and how much you like that game? Just look to my left on the wall. Okay, we moved it about 100 feet. I'm not exactly tired yet, but... Oh, hey, it's a person from Garland Ironworks. What? Well, yeah. Uh, I was going to make a pound of pasta when I was done, so I'm good. Thanks, though. Maybe, maybe these guys would know what the hell this mechanical thing is. 
mechanical vehicular device. Yeah, that. Oh, so that's why you guys have been running around all the different cities lately. Yeah, these guys are all over the map now. You'll see Ironworks uh, hired hands all over the place if you're going through the cities and stuff. So, you guys think you can fix it? Or should we take it to Sid so he can fix it? Oh, okay, cool. So he told you he'd be able to help. You know, just, just a thought there, Noct. You, you might want to change clothes a little bit. Dressing in all black in the Thanalan Desert has got to be murder on you, man. That's that's like Sweat City. Hey, Sid. So now you have uh, get to experience whatever this is next to us here. Well, I didn't think I'd be running into you so fast after the Crystal Tower, but apparently we keep running into each other. So do you know what this is, Sid? Because I'm at a loss. I love how the entire first part of this quest is just you figuring out what the hell a car is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I figured. It doesn't seem like a Garlean, at the very least. I haven't seen any machinery around here, either. Yeah, wherever he hails from, he has no idea where this is, so... <laughs> well, which Sid were you expecting? The one from Draclor Laboratories? Well, it'll broaden your horizons a little bit there, Sid. <laughs> of course you don't have any money. <laughs> Everything you do is on credit. Hey, what's a gill? Oh, this is gonna be a long game. <laughs> I just have these enormous gold pieces that would probably make me a rich man in this country. Yeah, Sid's a good guy. I mean, I, I know him pretty well, so he's probably doing this pro bono partially because I'm here, but I want to take all the credit. Well, you're only the warrior of light. It's not like you deserve some credit or something. <laughs> huh. So they're not, like, vanguards or something, huh? What's an MT? Oh, Magitech Trooper, okay. Is Niflheim, like, some side empire or something? As far as I know, there's only room for one evil empire in this area. Hmm. That's a little weird. <laughs> right. So you think he teleported from a different world? Oh, jeez. Why would I not be at all surprised? Oh, okay. So they're near the unholy air. All right. I mean, maybe. You said you were in one of their bases, right? So... Oh, uh... Okay. He doesn't seem like one to rest on his laurels or plan things out, does he? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was going to offer to go with him, but I guess now I'm chasing after him. I mean, fair enough. Well, we'll probably catch up to him faster if we go on Chocobo back, so let's go, Quinfucius. Let's chase after this gentleman and see what the hell he's doing. Where in the unholy air is he? Okay, so he's off on the south side of the rock there. Got it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, Conquer. Apparently English is just universal across dimensions in this uh, universe, or, you know, whatever language you're speaking uh, when you're playing this game. I don't know if there's any uh, Japanese viewers in the audience, but maybe. Hmm, he's probably up there. I don't think he's down here with the toads and stuff. Uh, that's some kind of weird technology. Somebody gold-plated their Magitech Trooper gear. Hmm. Alright, what am I missing here? There's a big circle and I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Is it this thing, maybe? I'm 
getting Vietnam flashbacks from all of the Circle missions in uh, Final Fantasy XV, where some of the Circles were, like, obnoxiously large for the thing that you're looking for. I can't tell if this is a person or something else. That's a person. Okay. So, that means Noctis has to be around here somewhere. I swear to God, these Sahagans that are outside of the freaking uh, Sahagans oh, are just voracious. They will chase you across the map and beyond. Oh. <laughs> They're all hungry. Oh, you have to wait for a fate to spawn. Okay. Well, that explains why he's here now. Oh, like clockwork. Okay. Did, you, did it spawn already? It did, because there's another player here, actually, who wants to help out. Oh, my God! Look at all of them. Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I have to level sync. Damn. All right. Okay, Noctis, don't go running off on your own, man. <laughs> That's like bad. Man, I don't know what kind of crazy technology he's using for his weapons, but Jesus Christ. All right, let's get some rock breakers in here. Let's just spam rock breaker, why the hell not? And where do you think you're going? Oh, okay. He's getting all of his HP back, apparently. If only I had Elixir Field. Oh, well. I don't actually know if Rockbreaker is a uh, an improvement in my DPS when there's two people, but oh well. What the hell? Who brought the ATAT? -AT? Oh good lord! Oh god! Get me out of there! All right, Noctis, keep our friend alive over there. I'll keep the big guy busy. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Ow. Maybe I won't keep the big guy busy. Believe in yourself, Jimmy. You got this. You're the main character. You're the protagonist. Yeah, but he just did 2,000 damage to me in a single hit, which is a little bit upsetting. This Antlink soldier's just like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Whoa. Okay, hang on. You guys didn't... Okay. You guys didn't see that, but I, uh... Ow. My mouse was in the wrong spot. Wow, this is tough. Because mm. I don't have a real means to heal myself beyond uh, my potions. Oh, I left the fate area. That's a little weird. Are they still coming after me despite the fact that I left the fate area? It's a little weird. Alright, let's back off for a sec. Close are we? 80%. Alright, we gotta get back in this, Confucius. Hold on. Let's wait for my HP to come back a little bit more. And wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Level sink. Okay. Let's get back in this. Yeah, it is what, just watching the fight like with popcorn or something. <laughs> oh, I have second wind equipped and I didn't even use it. What the hell? What's wrong with me? You're going crazy. Man. Oh, evidently. Oh god. He's chasing me with the AoEs. All right, back to this guy. Come on, Noct, we can get him. I'm using Diversion. Sorry, they're a random person, but... <laughs> oh, that explains why they hit me with the chainsaw. Okay, I see. 
because I was standing in the AOE for it. But yeah, what I was uh, going crazy for a minute ago there, where I was taking all that damage, was because uh, there was a... Um, my mouse was not on the correct part of the screen anymore, so it was, um, I was, I was like moving my, my window, my game window. It was pretty upsetting. <laughs> wow. I would imagine you're supposed to take this on with significantly more people but than just the three of us, but, you know. You might want to get out of that there, friendo. Alright, Antling Soldier, don't get hit by this, please. There you go. Oh, there's a fourth person now. Cool. Uh-oh. If only my diversion worked! Well, as long as Noctis stays alive, we should be okay. out of there. Have True North back. Let's get that going. Perhaps one of these. Oh. Hold my mouse out of the window again, trying to move the camera. You know what I should be doing? Oh god, Magitek missile. Sounds like hell! Dodge the always James. Dodge the Cleaves. You got this. I'm fine for now. I have blood bath, so that should work in my favor. And I have second wind equip, so that should also work in my favor. Ooh, I think he brought it down. Nice, knocked. Nice. You're on fire today! And so are my fists. Oh, there's another person, I think. Oh, no, that's the same person. Never mind. If only we had a tank, this would be going a lot better, because then they could be tanking the hits while the rest of us go. There is another person, okay. I mean, I'm not exactly the best tank, considering, but... Don't worry, Jimmy, you're doing fine. We've almost got him. I might as well just stand in one spot and just avoid the chainsaws, really. So I'm not, like, being obnoxious to all these other people. Let's get our second wind going. Hey, I got True North back. No one else I've got. I've also got my internal release. Oh, God. And pretty soon, uh, what's it called? They'll be back. Bloodbath. I don't even know if I'll need Bloodbath. We've almost got him. I'll take it anyway. Aha! Got him. Nice. Whew! That was tough. Good job, team! Thanks for the help there, Noctis. I don't know what he gave me out of that, but two pieces of unidentified Magitek. Alright. And he... Should we take those? You're just gonna walk this off like... It's nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Noct, maybe you should wait for me so you can get back to town without, like, dying. <laughs> oh going? He's just walking away like nothing happened. What the fuck? Did someone just leave on a pink chair? Yeah, I think they did conquer. <laughs> I was too busy trying to find my walk button and it wasn't working. I think it's this? Yeah. Okay. Because this is auto walk or run right here that I have on. Which makes you walk or run like you're playing on um, the normal control scheme. Man, that was tricky. Probably, again, a, a fate that you're supposed to do with multiple people, which is probably why we did significantly better when it wasn't just me and that other random person. <laughs> I don't think we had a single healer amongst us, but we, we got him. Oh, over here. Okay. Now, where did my friend go? Hmm. 
If I were a dude in a black leather jacket out in the middle of the desert, I mean, I'd probably try to seek some shade personally, but... Oh, there he is. You enjoy your walk out in the hot sun there, Noctis. That was a big piece of Magitek armor, for Christ's sake. <laughs> that I couldn't tell you. I... Hmm... Well, I mean, Sid might know something about... Well, actually, he might know something about your, your car there. I don't know if uh, the reporter will know anything, but... Let's try Sid first, and then maybe we'll go to the reporter after. He usually does there, Noctis. He usually does. Yeah, I mean, worst comes to worst, at least your car will be working by the time we get back, hopefully. Or if it isn't, Sid will have an idea of how to get it working. <laughs> See, I didn't realize you had to wait for a fate to spawn there, so... I think that's the only time in this quest line, though, that you have to wait for the fate to spawn, so... What's the good word, Sid? Uh, we were. It was a little tricky, actually. Probably one of the harder fights we've had recently. I probably should have just switched Confucius over to uh, heal stance, but it's okay. Well, you're in luck, because I got some random Magitek doohickeys, so... Oh. What would you... I mean, I, I kind of figure I know what you guys would do with them, but... Do some research. research. <laughs> what kind of outstanding tasks? Is that the urgent business you had to go on there, Sid? <laughs> Alright, so if we find any Magitek bits and pieces, we'll uh, bring them back to the Ironworks and we'll uh, let them take a look at them. Dude, where's my car? Ah, oh, okay. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, you gotta make it by hand? Jeez. Uh-oh. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that the reporter again? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Maybe Sid will have enabled his car to fly? Possibly. Possibly, Conquer. I think you can fly it if you get it, but... You either can get it from the Fate there, it's a very rare drop, or you can purchase it from the Gold Saucer for something like 200,000 MGP. And it's still less expensive than the entire Gambler set. I would like to point that out. A fucking car is less expensive than that outfit. Yep. And it's a four-seater. And Lollafell stand up while you drive it. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. <laughs> I was going to say, he's not exactly dressed like most Eorzeans, is he? But then again, he's not from here, so... Yeah, she's a reporter. I'm sure you know what a reporter is. Uh, <laughs> I think she's caught you red-handed there, Noctis. Regalia. It's a bit of a, yeah, hard pronounce. Might be the cheapest MGP mount. That's kind of sad because there's like, there's some crazy mounts at the at the Gold Saucer, and out of all of them, a car is the cheapest one. It's like wow. I mean, I, I understand why. Probably because it's only available for a limited time. But yeah, they don't want to make it like a million MGP and just be like nobody gets it. Mm -hmm. I mean, people would get it even though it's uh, you know. It, it's it's practically a two month period, so people would well a month and a half, so people would get that t one million two million MGP in that time period, but mm -hmm. it would take people a while. That kind of crazy. They don't want to gate it off from that many people. That's a bit of a mystery, even to him. I don't know where I am. I took a left turn, and now I'm here. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. Uh, I get the feeling that's a bit of a long story. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yes, but you see, she's the reporter, Noctis. You're not allowed to ask the reporter questions. It's like bad PR. Considering he's not from this dimension, I don't think bad PR is the first thing on his mind. Well, he did just grant her an exclusive interview, so... <laughs> Fucking knock this. That hat is the universal. This girl is a reporter sign. You'll see it in Hildebrand, too. Okay, I'll keep my eyes out for it, then. Well, Sid, another crazy day in paradise, huh? Alright. I... I'm going to go and see what's going on with our friend then, since you're going to be busy at it. Heading out, SP. All right, take it easy. We'll see you next time then. See you later. I should probably oh, resummon Confucius as well, since I think he bit the dust back there a little bit. Again, Confucius probably should have put him in. Out. Probably should have put him in heel stance. Confucius fought bravely, but he's no. But since he's only the god of this world, he's not the god of that world. He fell. Mm. Oh, you. Oh, the hat comes up later. You're still here. Okay, gotcha. Didn't realize what you meant. My bad. Well, if uh, the reporter's back where she was, that's probably where our otherworldly friend is. So let's go see what he's up to. Probably answering all manner of questions at this point. wasn't even aware there were reporters in this world. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. They need a news system somehow. How else is everyone going to know that the Empire is attacking for the umpteenth time? Carrier pigeon? Do you really think that they're going to entrust the mail to inform people of frickin' Imperial attack to carrier pigeons? They did in Final Fantasy VI. Well, everyone died in VI, now didn't they? I mean, most people did, yeah. But you know, only after Kafka did the thing. Yeah, that wasn't the carrier pigeon's fault. Oops, they that's might not the carrier who pigeon's I'm fault. Trying to look. There we go. Ah, okay. So he was on his way to meet his fiance when he met with this crazy teleportation nonsense, and that's why he's here now. We should probably help him get home then. His fiance is probably not the kind to be kept waiting. Bless you. Excuse me. Good lord. <laughs> yeah, alright. I, I get the feeling. The, the problem, Kippy, is that you won't be able to find out the conclusion to this story, because if he makes it back to his world, we never find out if he makes it back to his fiance. So. And then you start getting into the realm of fan fiction. Would you suspect a random-looking pigeon to be carrying important mail, call? <laughs> I mean, pigeons are always up to something. Them and the seagulls, they're evil, man. They shit on you like nobody's business. Trust me, I take it from personal experience. That's gross. Listen, I don't like my job either, but fucking... <laughs> yeah, Cole works around a lot of seagulls because he works near a body of water. So. The next time that I go, if I ever go back there, I'm going to take a picture and send it to the server so you guys can understand exactly how many fucking pigeon seagulls there are. Seagulls, pigeons, same difference. And why I hate this thing too, so much. That and the geese, those things migrate from hell. <laughs> Any moment now, huh? Oh, there we go. Yeah, ocean pigeons, exactly. You already have somebody who might know something about Noctis's fate. Oh, boy. Excuse me. Oh, okay. I guess we'll have to make a trip. We get Noctis's outfit, by the way, for doing this uh, set of quests, so that's kind of nice. Which port do I have to go to to uh, get to the Isles of Umbra? Aleport, right? To get what? The Isles of Umbra. Airport, right? Uh, yes. She is me. And yes, we can redo that fate that's over there um, across the entire seasonal event, and you can use them to, yeah, get the unidentified mage attack, which you can trade to the Ironworks hands all over the cities. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so they're in Blackbrush Station, but also in the three city states. So there's a few things that you can do with those. Um, I guess I could go look before we go do the rest of what this. What do you trade thing. the uh, unidentified Ironworks? stuff into the ironworks stuff for that's what we're gonna go find out because the closest ironworks hand is in the sapphire avenue exchange right over I this see. way so we're gonna go look 
I think you can get like Noctis' hairstyle, the rest. I think you get his clothes though, just through the quest line, but you can get like his hairstyle and a few other things. His uh, clothes I would specifically want for the boots. And I forget nice if you get the triple triad card for Noctis from the unidentified Magitek pieces or if you just get it from the gold saucer once you've completed all the quests here. His card is pretty good though. It's um, good on three sides. It's got an ace and a nine and a seven and then a one. So just place it on the side where it's not the one uh, anywhere that your opponent can take it and uh, you're in good shape. It's probably better than the cards that I have currently, which, um, let's see, what's my deck look like currently? This is what I got currently for my deck, since I can incorporate three stars now. I put Urian J, the Behemoth, this Curl Regina. I got the Cloud of Darkness card, so I figured I might as well use that. And then I got uh, Verder Falnir, or whatever that's supposed to be. I don't have a whole lot of three star cards, unfortunately. So I. Like a lot of my cards are two star cards, four star cards, that sort of thing. So. Oh, okay, so you can get Orchestrian Rolls from the Ironworks hands for this stuff. Unfortunately, they did not make uh, Stand Your Ground. A, an orchestrian role, and I'm upset about that part, but at least Falsta Fantastica's here, and the rest of the stuff here is pretty good, too, so. Uh, Veiled in Black is good. Hammerhead was the one that we've been hearing in the background for a lot of that first quest there, and Valsta Fantastica, if you've never heard it, is fantastic, just like it says in the title. So I'm gonna grab that one. And, um, hmm, what else? Probably Veiled in Black. I don't know, I might do the fade on my own time on uh, other occasions and get the other I know Jimmy's gonna get the damn car because his luck is ridiculous. I mean, I did get 10,000 MGP again from Mini Cackpot a couple days ago. Hmm. So one of us needs to get it before the event's over. <laughs> we will drive to wherever the hell Stormblood is, or fly, depending. Well, you drive there at first, and then once you get the Aether Currents, you fly. So cards MGP and it's pretty good yep yep definitely pretty good and I'll have to check it out at the gold saucer when we uh, get to that point because I have enough to buy it I have uh, 37,000 MGP so I, I haven't really had any reason to use it on anything else other than buying a couple of card packs so I can round out my cards it I, I did I mean, round it out at 59 before I did the crystal tower stuff but then Zand and cloud of darkness had to rain on my parade I wanted Noctis's card to be the one that I got for number 60 there but uh, apparently that didn't work out <laughs> hey cheeseburger how's it going we are doing the Final Fantasy XV crossover event currently. I just finished the first quest for it and the fate. So now we're doing the second quest, In the Dark of Night. And we're going to head off on a field trip with Kippy and Noctis here. So. Oh, okay, so we got to go off to the, the Shroud then. Hmm. The question is, what's a better road trip? The one you're going on now with Noctis or the one he was on? I'm pretty sure the one he was on was better than this. <laughs> I mean, he had Ignis with him. That automatically makes it better. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I can't really compare to Ignis, unfortunately. He's a pretty, he's a pretty good character in Noctis's eyes. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll meet you guys there. I've got to make a pit stop in Mordana anyway to drop off these pearls. So that's where we're going next. We'll finish up that gift of the Archmage's quest, the quest, and then we'll head to Gridania after that to check on some witnesses and see what they know about these MTs. Okay, my... where was my quarry? Oh, she's over here. Okay. Uh, Noah, I have the pearls for you. Yep. Oh, on the subject of, this. On the subject of cars. Nice. Well. Fucking. <laughs> oh, the regalia is somewhere near you. There's one driving directly next to me as I'm running through East the East Shroud. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's Car. trying to. We could only outfit ourselves so much before Graha closed off the Crystal Tower, so. That's what he's hoping. Oh, okay, sure. Thanks. Our... Okay, but what about leaving this poor girl's body, Noah? Isn't that kind of important? <laughs> 
Oh, good lord. We might have to punch God out of the girl's body. Yeah, and this is a quest that was from when the Crystal Tower quest dropped. This is a weekly quest, so two things. One, you can get the Elegant Catalyst, Ether Oil, and Encrypted Tonestone, Carbon Twine, or Carbon Code weekly. And two, no one never leaves Ko's body. So he's just there in her body forever because this quest is repeatable weekly. So that sucks for Ko, because she's kind of screwed now. She's never going to be herself ever again. <laughs> that's that's just that's just mean. And that's the plot of Shadowbringers, getting Noah out of the girl's body. Oh, jeez. It's just great Java compliers lagging at random making progress slow. Oh, that's not good, Conker. Hopefully, it, uh, hopefully that pads out for you. Yeah, he never leaves that body. Noah is kind of a dick. But then again, he, again, as we've said before, he is an Alligan, so... They're not known for being the most uh, friendly folk. I don't need any of this stuff. I've already got all the, the carbon coat and carbon twine and all that stuff I need. Did any of my stuff sell yet? No, not yet. Okay. So, because of that, we're gonna... We're gonna get rid of it. I don't need it. If I need it, I'll just buy it with tombstones. Whatever. Goodbye. Alright, let's go to Gurdania. Uh, you know what? Let's just teleport there. It's fine. I'm not in a rush, but this is a it's a bit of a walk and I don't really have much to say on the way. So let's just let's just not keep our friends waiting. I'm sure they're already there. Our new friends, I should say. Oh boy. What? Stone, Stone vigil. vigil. Oh, that's what you got for your leveling roulette. Thank, Thank God. God. Well, at least you're not tanking it. So you can be uh, slightly more. I'm deep guessing it. Yeah, that that makes things a little easier. Cause you don't gotta worry about it as much. Oh, they're all the way over. Oh here. shit! I have all the <coughs> abilities for this dungeon. Yep. I can actually DPS. Nice. I forgot what the boss of Stone Vigil was. Uh, some random dragon. Speaking of higher level dungeons, my adventurer squadrons are almost at level 50 now. I've got everybody in my squad at 49. So pretty soon there's going to be another one of those quests that you can do that are like priority missions for them. And I think once that's done, I can promote the last time up from first storm lieutenant to storm captain. Lucky you. So that's pretty good. I'll have access I'm to I'm still a... stuck. Yeah, because you got to go to Ormvale. I know. We'll fix that eventually. But yeah, um... Once I get up to Storm Captain, I can purchase some exclusive stuff, and it's it's pretty nice. Ah, okay, so there's mechanical soldiers in the East Shroud, okay. Right. Hmm. Let's see, who else do we need to speak to? Hardrafort and Maitani, okay. Uh, that's up in New Gridania. And okay, so let's just head up by the etherite crystal, then we'll we'll make our way. Actually, we'll just head up through this entrance, and we'll just head across. And then we'll see if we can find Noctis and Kippy. By the time we're done questioning the witnesses, they'll probably be back here. So things should go a little more smoothly from there. I'm just going to teleport to the Leather Workers Guild. That's right in between all the stuff that all the people we need to interview. <clears throat> uh, so there's one above and one below. So let's go see. We'll go to the one above first. And then, well, actually, they said that it was in the East Shroud and the person is right here. So maybe we can go to the one below first, then go to the one above. And um, then it'll be like, hey, go to the East Shroud. And there's the dock right there that leads us there. So. No? Hmm. Oh, okay. Near the Hawthorn Hut. Okay. More like dolls? Oh, jeez. Some crazy uh, technology they got going there. Turn people into, you know, unfeeling monsters, basically. Elegance for whack, yo. Yeah, but in this case, it's not Elegance. It's uh, the Niflheim Empire from Final Fantasy XV.
And what about you? You wouldn't happen to have any info on some, uh, yeah, mechanical soldiers. Oh, okay. Oh, jeez. Well, I will try. Um, we'll see what my friends want to go do. I'm sure... I'm sure because of the way that Noctis is, he's probably going to want to go there as quickly as possible to eliminate the threat. C considering, you know, how quickly he ran off towards the threat last time. He's probably want to do it again. Excuse me. Good lord. Got another, um, proc on my, uh on my Adventurer Squadrons as well for crafter, Red Crafter scripts uh, today. When they came in, it was, um, the Mission Affinity actually worked because the Mission Affinity was for Orogadin and the guy that has the Crafter scripts uh, proc is Orogadin. Uh, oh, shit. What is he? Orogadin Marauder, I think. Um, so I got like 215 more Crafter scripts. I, uh, for Leatherworker, I bought, uh, I bought another few things. I bought a belt. Um, to go with nice. the stuff, and so I've now I've got um, all the gear that I have for Leatherworker is either a, a blue gear or green gear. It's not the eye level 200 stuff all together yet. I still need about uh, let's see, 50 more uh, blue crafter scripts and 60 more goblin cups before I can fully kit myself. But I mean, if I do that once a day and he brings stuff in a little at a time, it won't always proc. It's like a 40% chance, but. I have another uh, adventurer in the squadron who uh, has increased chance of chemistry uh, abilities triggering after a mission by like 60% or something ridiculous like that once they reach level 50. So uh, then I'll just keep looking for crafter scripts ones to maximize my chances of receiving scripts at the end of the mission. So that way I can outfit Leatherworker as if I actually did more Leatherworking. <laughs> well, I yeah, I heard that there was... Uh, some near the Hawthorne Hut and the Bramble Patch, actually. Um, I guess the... Let's see. I guess the Wood Whaler would be a little bit more of a reliable source, so let's try him first. Woo. I almost just got burned alive by that cleave. Yeah, he seems to run off quite a bit. Okay, I'll go rescue him from getting lost again. Damn it, Noctis. He likes to run off, doesn't he? We could go visit the old Leather Workers Guild while we're here, but... Eh, it's alright. I'm not planning on doing, like I said before, the Leather Workers quests at this point. At least not until I'm uh, able to A, get my hands on all the I-200 gear, and B, get all the materials I'll need for it. Thankfully, I don't need to do nearly as much leather working uh, now as I did previously because um, there's only let's see, there's a fifty a level uh, quest of fifty that doesn't require you to make anything. There's a quest at fifty three, fifty five, fifty eight, and sixty. So only four quests worth of materials to make. So it's not really that bad. Um, the hard part is probably over, although that's debatable depending on the quality of the item you need to make. So. All right, let's see where Noctis made it to here. Let's see. He is in the East Shroud, so I guess I could have gone straight there from Gridania. That's all right, we'll just ride there from here. And then we'll see if we can encounter any more of these Magitech troopers. Hopefully another MAX doesn't spawn or something, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to handle that thing myself. I mean, I know Noctis will be there with us, but between us and that other person, we were we were still having a little bit of trouble, so. Oh, Holy shit. shit, I almost just died horribly there. That's not good. Again, so, so uh... I'm pretty sure what just happened is the first boss of uh, Stone Vigil cleaved, killed the entire party, but he was at 1%. And so I just reset all my dots, used Misery's End with freaking Barrage, and the boss just passed the fuck out. Shit. <laughs> nice. Nice indeed. Alright, back to doing bard things. Mm. Alright, so Noctis will be up in that area. Okay. 
Could grab a few wind crystals while I was here as well, but I don't really need wind crystals. I needed earth crystals and I got them. Oh, shit. The Miner's Guild quest last time, so. Wind crystals I've pretty much got more than enough of. But if I need them, I can always come up here because the enemies in this area are pretty weak and don't really bother my gatherer, so. Let's see. I would assume... Oh, nope, that's a blue mage. Never mind. I was going to say, I would assume this is the destination we need to look for because there's people here, but... That could be what these other people standing around are for instead of this blue mage. Well, okay, then. Alright, well, I'm going to get synced down again, so I won't have access to Elixir Field or 20,000 HP, but... It's okay. We should be fine. You never realize how nice 20,000 HP is until you lose it. <laughs> And then you can't dodge cleaves like an absolute unit. Knocked! Where'd you go, man? Can't keep running off by yourself, especially out here. Oh. Okay, well, you found the spot all right, I guess. Probably the local fauna wasn't exactly a challenge for you. All right. We can wait, then. What do you want to do to pass the time? I mean, as long as we're not looking for Mogglemog, I think we'll be okay. Though I'm not seeing these MTs that uh, people were saying they would find here. What was that noise? Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, let's go. Hmm. A daemon? Looks just like a void scent to me. A little bit more angry, though. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Doesn't look like a normal uh, spawn around here, so unless it's like an A rank or an S rank hunt. Yeah, let's get in there, Noctis. Let's take him down! Wonder if Noctis knows how to play Triple Triad. I mean, he could probably <laughs> he could probably play uh, Circles Around Me in King's Knight, but I don't know if he knows how to play Triple Triad. Whoa, that was fancy. I don't know what he did just there, but... <laughs> oh, there's no positionals here. Sweet! That means you could just go in. Yeah, you might not want to get hit by that tail whip there, Noctis. Just a thought. You know, thinking about it, though, I think I know why it doesn't have positionals, because technically this monster's from the Final Fantasy XV universe, so they don't have positionals there. Wow. Oh, God. Noctis, watch those AoEs, man. Actually, can he even see those? Considering, you know. Whoa, okay, they come back. Have to keep that in mind. Uh oh. That's a stack mechanic. Noctis, stay here! Ouch. Uh, oh, okay, that's a get out of the way mechanic, I think. Oh, nope, he's coming towards me. I'm not sure if that means we're both going to get hit, but... I was under the assumption that that was a, a don't stack, because we both had AoEs, but I could have been wrong. Well... Yeah, that pillar looks bad. I wonder what it's all about. Did we get it? Wow! Oh. Get me out of there. Watch out, knocked! I don't really need to keep propping true north, I guess, but well, I'm still doing it. Let's get our second wind. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so we were probably both supposed to get close to the pillar so that it doesn't deal, like, super high damage or something. Alright, that makes sense. Well, in the event that we fail, I know what to do now. Ah, he's immune to stun, that's no good. 
so. Okay, they come back, so as long as I stay over here, I should be okay. Yep. Did he get HP back from those? Seems like he's got more HP than he did a minute ago. Maybe I'm just crazy, though. Uh oh. Come over here, so I can kick you. There we go. Yeah, Noctis has got some fancy shoulder tackle or something there. He keeps flying in. Looks like he's hitting at the speed of light or something. Oh, that's a tornado. I'm getting the fuck away from that. They recently started making solo content positional from all directions. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, I still don't know if this is a stack or stay away mechanic, but it doesn't seem like it's dealing that much damage, so... Probably a stay away oh. mechanic. Last time we didn't stay away, but whatever. <laughs> no, watch out, Noctis. Probably as long as you're not, like, directly in the thing there, you're probably okay. Almost got him. Yeah, got him. Nice. Well done. Whew! That was a bit of a rough spot there. It wasn't as rough as that MAX, but I'm ready for a breather. <laughs> What do you think there, Noctis? I don't know, did that teleporter take, like, most of the stuff in your vicinity with you, or something? If that's the case, where are your friends? Or your fiancé? I don't know if she was with you, but... <laughs> All that fighting made me hungry. I don't exactly have any food, but... Yeah, I think that it would be best if we rested for now. We'll be better off, uh... Taking a breather. Could go back to the Hawthorne Hut and take a rest if you want. Glad you agree. Oh, you brought camping stuff? Okay, sure. I'll help set up camp. I gotta tell you, though, I didn't level culinarian, so I don't know the first thing about cooking. I think we're both screwed in that department because Noctis doesn't really know the first thing about cooking either. <laughs> he can know the first thing about cooking if you train him up in it. Yes, that's true. Probably should have taken the helmet off for this part, but that's okay. Looks like we're all set up. Oh, nice. He made some rice cakes. I don't know where he got the rice from. Actually, there probably is rice in this world, but... Yeah, you know. Why do I go around doing it? I don't know. Nothing better to do, I guess. I just like adventuring, man. Could say it's in my blood. Yeah, we'll just go with this one. I do protect and support, but at the end of the day, it is just about being with the people that uh, I enjoy the company of. Oh, <laughs> Prompto sounds like a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. Yeah. I'll bet you guys did stuff like this all the time, huh? Yeah, I guess I could ask you the same question. Promise to your fiancé, maybe? Yeah, we, we got to work on that for sure. <laughs> I don't even know how we're going to start on that, but... Well, you know. You, you might not want to fall asleep with that full cup in your hand, man. That That's liable to fall all over your good black jacket there. At least it won't stain. I guess. Now if he was wearing white on the other hand. Woo! Yeah, then he'd be in deep shit.
And I realized something. If Thunderbolt was a stay away from each other mechanic, the first time it happened, I missed the opportunity to say, NOT THE TIME FOR HORSEPLAY! So he could be like, my hand slipped. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> Alright, let's take the helmet off since we're back in town. Well, Kippy, we're no closer to finding out how to get Noctis home, but we did kill a demon, so... Slaying demons is always good for the health. Yeah, unfortunately, we came back with more questions than we did answers. <laughs> It's basically a very unhappy void scent. Right. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Well, I guess that's true. As long as he doesn't have to use that portal to the world of darkness, I think he'll be okay. Okay. I mean, sure, as long as you're not going to wander off into the shroud again. <laughs> Oh, well, there he goes. <laughs> this is becoming a recurring trend. Noctis is a strong, independent woman that don't need no guide. Mm. <laughs> I'll go after him, sure. Seems to be my job right now. Okay. Now, where the hell did he go this time? Uh, he's back by the Aetherites Plaza. Okay. So not far away. Oh, look, he found my benefactor <laughs> for my leather working. Oh, what are you doing out here? Observing the local uh, trades there. Uh, yeah, that, that remains to be seen, Noctis. You kind of ran off by yourself twice now. Oh, really? Huh. Well, that does kind of sound like my Senta. She's a pretty good uh, benefactor, if I do say so myself. Or she's just looking to advertise through you. I mean, I don't know how much advertisement you're going to get out of my Senta. Pretty soon he's not even going to be in this world anymore. Sure. Yeah, I'll hang out for a bit. Why the hell not? Needs to unwind in a quest called Messenger of the Winds. Great. Yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum. Well, she's she's got some good connections, so hopefully it'll uh, they'll come up with something for you. Hey, there's a good idea. You'll have a nice story to tell them when you get back. Oh, really? I I've I can probably count on one hand how many times I've picked up a fishing pole in my life. Unfortunately, never leveled fisher either. did he get off to? Ooh. He is just outside in the central shroud. Okay. Then that's where we're gonna go. Let's head towards Ben Branch Meadows and see if we can't find this fishing hole that he's looking for. That thing there that this uh, Lala fell next to me running past me has is the Puff of Darkness, the thing with the little yellow orbs floating around it. <laughs> so, in case anybody was wondering what it looks like, that's pretty much what it looks like. Granted, that was from the back, but, you know. All right, let's get Confucius back out here. I don't know if he'll appreciate uh, the finer arts of fishing, but, I mean, I don't think chocobos even eat fish, now that I think about it. But... I'm sure he appreciates just being in the company uh, with us, so keeping our company. Yeah, getting getting some Vietnam flashbacks again of with how large the area is here. I mean, I kind of can like gauge where Noctis is, but some of the circle areas that they had you find stuff in in 15 were like obnoxious. It was so <laughs> covered like 
like a huge amount of the screen, basically. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be nearly it's as uh, crazy. I think I see him over there. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be nearly as crazy in this game. So, yep, there it is. Yeah, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't so much that I, I hated the concept of them there, Yugmen. For me, personally, it was just the, the number of quests that had those circle things in 15 that kind of put me off. It, it just got old after a while, you know what I mean? So. I can't tell which fishing rod that is there. I don't think it's his starting one, though. I also don't think it's the end game one, because I've had the end game one before, but... You know. Yeah, there was a there was a few of them with frogs. Yeah, and the frog ones, I had to do all of the frog ones in 15 because they got you a ribbon accessory, which was a really really nice accessory in 15. Um, but the the circuit, those are probably some of the most difficult uh, things to find in the circles because they didn't really give you any indication. It was just like search this entire gigantic area. And you kind of have to, I mean, you can traverse it with uh, on foot or on chocobo back, but it's a little, it's a little more uh, obnoxious than it is in this game, so. In 14, they tend to be by the edge of the circle, you think. Yeah, it seems to be the case in a lot of cases here. In, in 15, you're, you're not so lucky. They could be anywhere in there, so. <laughs> I usually find them by the edge of the circle, honestly. In 14 or in 15? Uh, 14. Yeah, yeah, that's what SP was saying, but in 15, I was saying they could be anywhere. You've reeled in a dozen fish already? Good lord, man, you're pretty good at this fishing gig. You could practically try out at the Fisherman's Guild. I mean, if you can't find your way back... I don't want to think about that, but I'm sure you don't either. Well, good. Keep your mind off it a little bit, you know? You'll get back, Noctis, I'm not worried. We'll find a way. You got Sid and Kippy and all the rest of them helping you out. You'll get there. Well, I'll do what I can. A photo? Uh, is that like a painting or something? Are, are you a good painter, too? That's not really yeah, a... Uh, You're just good at everything. It's not really a Disciple of the Hand thing yet, although I, I would imagine if they were going to add a new Disciple of the Hand class, I couldn't see Painter being one of them. But I, I don't know if they're even going to ever add any more Hand or Land classes. I think they're pretty much done with those. I mean, yeah, what, shoot, what's a photo? A Is it class? like a painting? Oh, okay. So your link shells have, uh, like they're not just in your ear. You have like a screen and stuff on it too. That's interesting. So so, what do you do with those things? Can you like get them out of that little box or what? I sound like I'm from the 1920s or something, like, finding out what a camera is for the first... Actually, they had cameras before that. I sound like I'm, like, some old-timey folk who doesn't know what a cell phone is. <laughs> is there... I love that you're playing this in character. It makes it even funnier. I'm trying. <laughs> is there already a painter in the game used for housing as an NPC? Ah, oh, okay, gotcha. See, I could see that, though, being, a, a like, a... a class that's actually accessible for people. I'm kind of honestly surprised they didn't do anything with it with um, Stormblood because it's kind of the the, the Japanese expansion and uh, there's a lot of uh, painting roots in the uh, in Japan so I suppose there's a lot of painting roots everywhere but I, I can aside from out, out of all the places that, that are in the game so far I can think of none that would better represent a painter's guild, quote-unquote, than some place that's got some Japanese representation to it, so. Yeah, in character I am, SP, and that's why I'm trying to play it as straight as I can in character, because it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a high technology for me in character. 
I usually try to do that when I do uh, role-playing playthroughs. Not not usually as a self-insert character. Like from when I did uh, my Mass Effect playthrough, I tried to play it in role as best as I could, even though it was a character separate from my own. My Persona 5 playthrough turned out kind of similar to that, although I think that one was, because it was on uh, live stream rather than on video, I had to, I had to interact a little bit more with the people in chat and a little bit less like I was the character I was playing as because it wasn't me in that case it was a Japanese high schooler so but yeah when when it's um when I'm doing some sort of role playing thing I try to play it as as straight as I can so try to stay in character as best I can that is Well, Kippy, you've had all of three hours. Any new leads? Why, what's up? You sound like something's gone wrong. Something always goes wrong. Oh, God, they're in Ixali territory, too? I hope the Akadal 9 are okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, they summoned Garuda in response to the MTs. Oh, man. Wait, you know what Garuda is, too? Well, she's here as well, and, uh... She's a, she's a crazy bitch. bitch. She's, she's, yeah, she's a bit crazy. I'm surprised Kippy knows that I'm a Primal Slayer. I suppose that gets around, but... Uh, I don't know what those things are, but if... Since they're capitalized, I would assume, sure. I love how he's so nonchalant about it. Like, well, we gotta take care of her nonetheless. Can't have her threatening the safety of people, you know? So. Well, if she's where she was before, she's in the Howling Eye, yeah. Well, I could probably get my friends at the Ikado 9 to rent us out their, uh, the Desil Kalan. Their airship should be able to get through those winds. So that's why you did that. No, they don't rent it out. Sid helps us in a minute, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they're going to contact the Ironworks and Sid will give us his airship. Sounds like a plan, huh, Noctis? We'll have to get in there. Sid's a bro like that. He'll just give you his airship whenever you need it. I mean, Noctis seems to be a pretty decent partner there. He's got... Hopefully he's as good as the three other adventurers at the same time, so... Okay. Sounds good. We'll meet you at the airship landing, then. You'll lend me the power of kings? What What does that mean? What you got there? Well, that's a fancy way to say shoulder tackle, but okay. <laughs> so, so how do you share it, exactly? Do they ever explain that in 15? I think it's just because his uh, friends have been given access to the power of kings because they're the king's guard, basically. Makes it more interesting. Thanks. I'm glad that it's uh, it's making it a little more interesting. I'm trying to, so do a pretty ga damn good job playing this and other games and character. Thanks, Conker. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm trying, man. Try and keep things interesting for everybody. Is it is it gonna be like warping through the ether or something? Well, you don't know what that is either, so I can't really ask you that. All right, works for me. So let's get back to the Carline Canopy and then we'll uh, we'll head out. So what what did he give me exactly? Is it like in my uh, abilities or something? I didn't get Tackle Mastery out of it, so that's no good. Uh, did he give me anything? Is it like? Is it well, I did. I didn't get like a tutorial message for whatever it was. So I guess we'll I guess we'll just write it off for now. And I'm sure it, I'm sure when it's important, it'll give me a tutorial message or something. But apparently he bestowed the power of kings to me because he could. At least a temporary fix, anyway. Yeah, I am definitely dropping frames here in Gridania. I don't know what it is. It's probably people just all being here. And the rain. And all that other stuff. The frickin' rain. That's the worst. Mud. Frickin' rain is like murderer of frames. I mean, it's not terrible. It's only, it's in the 50s in FPS, but it's a noticeable difference from the normal 60 that I get, that's for sure. Well, at least you can run this game at 60, you bastard. That's because you run yours in practically full screen. 
I'm sorry that I can't fit all that crap on the screen and see. I have a large monitor. It's hard to not. Oh. What? You ever just walk out into a field and see a marble the size of like a building? Ah. Um, yes, actually, when I was going to Hawk Manor for the first time, I think. Can, that scared the everlasting hell out of me for a hot minute there. Hmm. Alright, my preparations are set. Let's head off to the Howling Eye. To kill Garuda. With a question mark after. Again! By myself this time. Well, well, with Noctis, but, y you know. Eh, you fought, ex you fought primals on hard mode. You got this. I sure hope so. Why are you guys running? Aren't you normally enthralled with Garuda? Like, literally? Maybe they did the summoning wrong. What do you mean it's like your Garuda, but not like your Garuda? That looks pretty close to our Garuda. Oh. Okay. She got a different outfit. Great. <laughs> Yeah, that's not our Garuda. This one's jacked. <laughs> I don't know how many crunches and sit-ups it takes to get that kind of abs, but Jesus Christ. Uh, are you Garuda? Because if you are, you're in the right place. <laughs> oh, so you know Noctis. Okay, well, that makes things a little easier. Maybe she'll stop fighting then. Whoops, I don't know what he said there, but I think I think she said that uh, he was the reason she jumped to this point, but apparently she can jump through dimensions. Garuda has fucking dimensional powers in 15. Great. Wait, so you guys just fight primals on the on the random too? Just they're just like you know whatever. You're the king. Fight me. Sounds like uh, deja vu here. Great. Well, here we go. Hope you're ready, Noctis, because she looks upset! And now she looks like our Garuda. Great. <laughs> Duty actions. What is this? There are special actions that are available only during the... What is he saying? Time to put your new power to use. Get the hangman in no time. Warp circles are... Okay, so I can warp strike now. Nice. Attack root at a distance. Can I move, can I move this at all? Hang on. I'd like to put. Hang on. I, I think I know how I can do this. Can I put this on my bar? No. So is it just stuck in that part of my? Hang on. Let me let me do this. HUD layout. That is not a part of the layout. Wait. Hang on. Duty. Aha! Here we go. Duty action. I I can't sync this to a, a hotkey, huh? That sucks. Oh well. We'll stick it down here, so it's right there. Okay, well, anyway, yeah, we can warp strike to attack Garuda from a distance and move around the battlefield. So now, not only do we have a, a gap closer with shoulder tackle, we can also move around the battlefield with warp strike. And I get the feeling we're going to need to use these monoliths for just that, if this is any part of uh, similar to some of the stuff we do in, in Final Fantasy XV's proper. So, all right, let's get ready. Here we go. All right, Noctis, hope you're ready for this, because I'm about to let loose. Yeah, that was a little a little weird. <laughs> it's like teleporting in the ether, but, like, way shorter burst. Just happens instantly. Holy! You guys have for 2,000 damage with that warm strike. It's pretty good. Damn, Power Kings better be something we can keep. Let me get that shit. Yeah, oh, Mistral Shriek. Hang on. Justice. I don't know if I made it in time. Maybe. Yep. Nice. Hey, we Link Striked. Nice. So yeah, if you... Uh, I, I would assume it's similar to 15, where if you strike uh, at a similar time to Noctis, you will Link Strike, and it will increase the damage that you take. Or the increase the damage that you deal, rather. Should have been dark hunting. You'd make more use of your giant sword, Conker says. Okay. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> then I could have tossed it like Noctis tosses great swords. So, nice. 
I just toss a great sword is hilarious. It's so freaking slow though. I never use great swords in uh, in 15 because they're just too slow for me. Generally, you'd switch to them, warp strike, and do like a million fucking damage. Yeah. Because that was like the meta for a little while in 15. Basically, you just kill everything. There was just one great sword you could just get and then just eat everything if you upgraded right. Yep. I usually, personally, when I do. Um, when I do, uh, when I play 15, I usually play with swords, I play with lances, and I play with daggers. So Noctis ends up being basically like a second Ignis, essentially. Uh oh. And then, you know, the King the Royal Edition comes out, and you're just like, hey, I'm just gonna play as Ignis. I've got a better gap closer this time, Garuda. <laughs> I need to keep my mouse down here, though. <laughs> uh oh. Where's she going? Oh, okay. Let's warp over here this time. I'm just glad these monoliths don't take that much damage from his warp striking stuff. <laughs> it's too bad I don't have like chakra or t tornado kick for this though, that would make it a little more epic, but it's okay. We'll make do with what we've got. Well, she's immune to stun, that's not good. Noctis, you might want to- oh god, get out of that, wow. Oh, okay, I'll just stack on him, even though he's right next to the gravitational pull. <laughs> wow. Where are you going, son? Oh, uh oh. Ah! I'm trying to warp to the monolith! Oh god. Warp striking in 14. Ouch. Was harder than actually doing dungeons. Based on what I'm hearing, my brothers suffer. Through. Okay, so I think what I need to do is I need to wait to warp until she's almost done casting that, and then go. Okay, let's try that again. That's interesting, though. I just wish I could map it to a hotkey, because if I could, this would be no problem. I'd just be using it right there, but... I wonder if it's, um... I wonder if I have to go to the other monolith, though. But it seems like she's right in the middle of the arena, so I don't think it matters, so... Didn't know it one-shots you. Tanks are just able to take it. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, apparently it one-shots you. Damn, Jimmy. Just be like, it's going dark now. You'll be able to survive. Nah, we'll do this on Monk. It's fine. I gotta take advantage of my new fancy upgraded shoulder tackle. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And keep my mouse hovering over well. Nah, let's get out of here. I can probably still deal a decent chunk of damage, though, while I'm waiting. Instead of just walking out, I could finish my combo, at least. Probably turn her away from Noctis too. I'm not a tank, but tank sensibilities, you know. Whoa. Okay. Let's get out of here. Yeah, not too bad. Just uh, just that one thing that it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. That's all. That's it. Present your flank. Okay, well, this is a stack, so that's fine. Get back here! We still got a link strike, even though he popped in like way after me. All right, is she shrieking? Yep, she's shrieking. Let's get out of here. And go. Yeah, 
Yeah, pretty much conquer. You probably could just uh, wait until he warps and then follow suit. That's what I'll try to do this time. Come over here. There you go. Knocked! Watch out! Let's get back in there. Okay, so, here's what we'll do. Let me see, I don't have second win, so let's pop one of these. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go! Oh no! Okay, I pressed that as quick as I could. Okay, we got it. Good. Good job. See, I think the problem is that with where my enemy list is, uh oh. It's, um. It's tough to see where the end of that bar is because it's kind of off the screen there, so. Where's she going? Oh, okay. Uh oh. Probably gonna pull us in again, I'll bet. Oh, never mind. You have lost them, then. Good thing I didn't bet any money on it. I mean, shit, I would have taken some money. Shit. <laughs> Just joking on your bag, so funny. Even after the sunglasses, you're probably still. Loaded. Now, I don't have a warp strike, Noctis, but let me show you my. my uh, oh god, my equivalent. I guess I could warp strike first. Present your back, give me that extra damage we can deal there. Oh god. Come over here now. There we go. Oh. And back in nice oh I think she's getting ready for another micro burst mistral jail uh oh how is that jail spelled I'm down for the count wow go on without me kill her kill her quick Active time maneuver? What the hell? I'm not ready, but oh god, okay. Okay, okay. Press buttons, press buttons! Jimmy, what's happening? I can't look at the screen. Active time maneuver, I had to get out of that storm cell. Okay, we got her. Nice. Hey, I didn't know you knew tornado kick. Where did you get that bow? <laughs> nice. Good armager there, Noctis. It's probably better than I could have done it. Alright, cool. We got her. These are usually very easy. Button mash time. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay, so they're, they're not too bad then. Gotcha. That seemed pretty good. They gave you plenty of time to do that one, so. And I imagine since it's the first one I've seen, um... Because, basically, you can do this quest anytime after you've done the ultimate weapon quest uh, at the end of the main story from A Realm Reborn. So since it's the first one most people will probably see while this event's going on, they probably made it pretty simple to do. So, Well, I try, Noctis. I've trained with my fists since I got to Eorzea, so... What'd you think of that, Garuda? Well, at least she's acknowledging us rather than just being like, You're an asshole for killing me, but I'll be back. Well, I'll be back. <laughs> I mean, they, they have to, you have to prove your worth, I would assume. I can appreciate that. It's kind of like Ravana, although that's a completely different story. Hey, they got the car working. Nice. Completely different story. I don't think Noctis is going to get to fight Ravana though, because they got his car fixed. <laughs> nice. Does his car have an interdimensional warp drive? 
I don't know. Let's see if Sid put one in. <laughs> He'll have to reach 88 miles an hour first, though. You want to talk about a reference among references? That would be funny. Oh, wait, you know EOS 2? I have EOS. Oh, EOS is his... Okay, wow, my fairy got a world named after her. Holy hell, nice job, EOS. You, you, I mean, you are the better fairy in 99% of cases right now, but... Jeez. That's impressive. Also, apparently Garuda can just open up portals to another world, so that's cool. Looks like the light gate from the world of darkness. Well, looks like you got what you wanted, Noctis. You can head home now. Been a fun little adventure, though, so... Oh, damn, I'm leaving. I guess I gotta leave you with something of a present. Here, I brought an extra change of my own clothes. Take them. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us will ever understand them, Noctis. I'll be honest with you. Not in your world and not in ours. Yeah, nice to have a little company on the road. I, I got a bit of a vacation, so... Yeah, l let's do this again sometime. I'm sure I'll see you again. Maybe not in character, but... Out of character, for sure. I don't know if any divinities are going to be opening any portals back here for you, though, but, you know. Alright, so Noctis. in this game than he does in 15. It's because yeah, he uses the proportions a, are right, but the face is weird. He uses a hero model from this game, so that's why he uh, he looks a little strange. I'm like, why? Later, why? Noctis. Say hi to your friends for me. Tell them about all our adventures. Oh, I wonder if that's his fiance. You know what you must do. <laughs> Well, there he goes. We knew him but for a brief time, but he seemed like a good guy. Seems like he's got a lot of work ahead of him, though, I'll be honest. There's only a couple, let's see. The final storm of loss in Extremo can be a little rough with the quick time things. There's only a couple, one of them is one of the coolest moments in a specific trial, though because one of the tanks smashes the button while blocking a sword the size of Sid's airship. <laughs> Oh god. Oh my god, I know what trial it's from. In hard mode, a DPS healer can do it without dying. Oh, okay, gotcha. This Garuda is much less terrifying. Yeah, for sure. We didn't have nearly as much trouble with that. Wonder if this is canon in either game. Probably not. Unfortunate typo would be amazing, though. It, Yeah, there's, there's a crossover event in 15 that has 14 happening, and the Garuda from 14 comes into 15 and allows Noctis to summon Garuda in 15, which she was not a, uh, an astral in 15 originally until that patch that patch happened like at the end of last year or something so this event happens after that event in 15 so like the garuda event in 15 happens and then he ends up in this world the the this event happens in this world and he ends up back there i don't know at what point in the game it's supposed to happen exactly i think it's like probably close to the end of the game if not like after the ending because like there's a there's a chapter 15 in Final Fantasy 15, where you basically can go and explore the world and do any side quest that you've done, and the recommended level for the Garuda uh, quest, crossover quest, is like the same level as the final mission of the entire game, so it's, uh, you could do it before going off to the point of no return, or you could do it uh, afterwards when there's no consequences, but yeah, you know. Yeah, wait, he didn't go 88 miles an hour? Oh boy, he's gonna end up in a different world next. Where's he gonna end up next? Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> yeah, you fight, uh, yeah, so there's a there's a Mikote that ends up in, four, in 15's world, and you fight the 14 version of Garuda there, and then in this this event happens here, and you fight and the 15 And if my memory version. serves, that fight with Garuda in 15 is hard as shit. <laughs> well, it is a quest at the same level as the final mission of the game, so... But Fair. that that also lets you get Garuda as a summon in 15, which is pretty good. So I mean, I don't know, man. I beat Melusine at level 60 in 15, and she's a level 99 enemy. So whatever. <laughs> I don't levels don't really mean that much in 15 because you can beat enemies at levels much lower than you're supposed to if you know what you're doing. So 
Interesting fact, Ishtolo is the designated 14 rep, supposedly says the Kefka minion is familiar, according to the description, because she encounters him in the city. Ah, okay. That makes some sense. Let's see what Kippy has to say about uh, this turn of events here. She won't get to finish her story, like I said, but, you know. Well, Sid, that was an adventure and a half, wasn't it? Yeah, same. Maybe that was his fiance. Probably, Sid. Probably. It could have been, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it's more than that, though. It's like they, they share, a f uh, their fates are intertwined in some way, but I guess that sort of also describes a fiancé, just in a more poetic sense. I mean, in the literal sense, their fates are intertwined, rather than a poetic sense. I mean, you could mean both. I guess. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to find out. Noctis is kind of off in his own little world now. Quite literally. Mm. Yeah, you and most of the fan base, Kippy. You and most of the fan base. Wait, what? <laughs> Wherever he is and his fiance are, I hope they're reunited. Mm. <laughs> that that was definitely the developers lampshading that shit, though. Okay, well, you've got a story, and we had a bit of an adventure, so. I want to throw something at the people who were developing 15 after all that bullshit. <laughs> They gave us the promise of all this DLC, a much better, a true ending and expansion of all the character stories, and then just cut it off in the best episode. Hmm. That makes me furious beyond all, all hopes. Yeah, they really should have finished the DLC episodes with 15, but Tabata wanted to move on to different projects, so there wasn't much that we could do. I can't blame the man for getting creatively burnt out, but damn, dude. Yeah, you, 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 you helmed this project for probably, what was it, like seven years or something like that by the time the development was done? Because uh, 15 was not 15 originally, it was Versus 13 way back in 2006, and it was in development hell for something like 11 years, and Tabata finally took the helm and got the game finished, which, good on him for getting it finished, it's just it felt a little incomplete in certain situations, and now because he left, they're not going to finish the DLC for it. The final DLC for it just came out, and I haven't played it yet, um, but as far as I can tell, it didn't exactly finish up and tie up all the loose ends, which is a little bit upsetting, but I mean... From what I understand, you know, though, Episode Arden's fantastic. Mm. I'll have to play it when we play 15 for the first time, so... But then again, if you want a real true ending, Episode Ignis gave you that. I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. But that's not the canon ending, so... <laughs> Fuck the canon. <laughs> Probably, Sid. He's probably got a lot of trials ahead of him, too. I'm sure he will. He seemed like the type to keep his uh, head in the realm of light. Maybe we'll see him again one day. Perhaps. And this music that's playing in the background is Valsta Fantastica, by the way, in case anybody doesn't know. It's very good. But that's it. That's the end of the 15 crossover. So now, yes, you can go to the Ironworks vendor at the Gold Saucer and exchange some MGP for special items. So let's head to the Gold Saucer and see what we've got there. <laughs> the achievement is Brother from Another Mother Crystal. It's not wrong. <laughs> it really isn't. But that was a good event. I liked that. That was a... Uh... It was, it was a good way to kind of give you like a mini adventure with a character that, uh, and and personally like that that obviously isn't my first introduction to Noctis. I've played through all of 15's normal story. I, I didn't play any of the DLC, but I've played through all of 15's uh, vanilla story. So I'm I'm well aware of the trials and tribulations that Noctis goes through, and it was a good way to kind of, you know, give you a bit of a mini adventure with a character who doesn't necessarily belong in the world, and then let him go back to his place so he can finish things up. So I liked it. It was a good little crossover event. And I'm pretty sure they've done several crossover events over 14's lifetime. Like, I think there was one where Lightning from Final Fantasy 13 was in the game, maybe? I forget. Which 13? Uh, Lightning Returns, I think. <laughs> 
I, I would have to look. I, I don't quite remember. I was to say, if it was the 13 where, where, she, where has she has no personality, no personality. Hmm. makes me angry. But anyway, yeah, so we can trade for a bunch of different things here. So we could get the Noctis card for Triple Triad. We can get his hairstyle for 20,000. And then if you have 200,000 MGP sitting around, which you might by the end of this event, you can get the Regalia. I'm just going to take the card personally. I couldn't really care less for the rest, but... I mean, the rest of the stuff is cool, don't get me wrong, but I couldn't do the hairdo like Noctis could do the hairdo, and the regalia, well, it's a nice car, but I got it's Confucius. A we could fit the entire party so far into it. Yeah, I got Confucius. That's fine. But yeah, anyway, the, the, here's the card, by the way, because I'm probably going to replace the Cloud of Darkness with it real quick. Let's take oh, that out, okay. stick that in, and yeah, there you go. So it's it's a really nice card. It's probably just a straight upgrade to the stuff that I had with Cloud of Darkness there, because Cloud of Darkness has is good all around, but isn't good in any particular area other than right, and that's where Noctis excels. He's a good, uh, he's a good top left card basically, and so I've got coverage in most of the board now with him there. So that should help things out in fighting new Triple Triad foes as we go along. I've already been able to battle King Elmer to a stalemate in the vast majority of my matches now. I think I lost about... Let's see, I fought him probably about ten times since getting access to three-star cards, and I've probably only lost about twice. Granted, most of the rest of those were draws, but I've won like two, three times, so... I beat bad. everyone in that hall before I unlocked the challenge log, including King Elmer. Mm-hmm. So I don't ever want to go through that again, because beating him was the biggest stroke of luck I've probably ever had, ever. Oh, jeez. Well, alright, so we're done with that crossover event, and we're done with the Gift of the Archmages. So now, we can move on with the plot for a little bit. So let's head to Tailfeather, and then warp straight over to Foundation. Holy crap, he's moving on with the plot. Yep, so just make sure, Cole, you're done with uh, 3.1 by the time... Uh, because you're not going to be here for Once Wednesdays or dungeon, Fridays. I'm going stream, to do so. 3.1. Okay. I got real close to another level up with my bar just off hunting log stuff, so I just figured I'd queue up for another dungeon while I was doing it. Makes sense. I already did my uh, roulette for the day, but I don't need that much XP. I need like 18,000 to, to a level, and I think I'll get that out of one dungeon. Ah, gotcha. Okay. But yeah, so Cole will not be here for a couple of streams this week because I had to do a bit of a wonky schedule. Um, the, because of the maintenance that's happening tomorrow, he won't, uh, none of us will be here for that. Um, my birthday is on uh, Tuesday, but I can't be here for that because my mom is uh, coming back from a vacation, so I have to make sure that we're, uh, I'm picking her up for that. And um, on Saturday, I have another exam. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit busy this week, so I had to schedule it on some wonky days. And uh, Cole normally cannot be here Wednesdays or Fridays because he has other obligations, so... Yes. He will not be here, but hopefully he'll be all caught up with everything. Oh, trust me, I'll be caught up. Let's see. An Uncertain Future is the next quest, and it is up at House Forton. So let's head up there right House now. Forton. And we'll move on with the plot a little bit today. We won't get too far, I don't think, but we'll do the best we can. I think, though, before I start, I'm actually going to head into the house, and then I'm going to go use the restroom real quick, and then I will be back. Man, it's been a while since I've ran a thousand miles of Total Rock. Yeah, you don't usually get it that often. At least I don't get Total Rock that often in uh, in Duty Roulette. Yeah, Alfie Node's got the quest right here, and oh, there's a we can fight the House Fortant manservant in a game of Triple Triad. So we'll do that in just a moment. Once, oh nope, that's that's not how you sit on that couch. There we go. I'll have a seat on their nice comfy couch. Put my feet up, sit back a little bit, and I will be right back after I uh, go get some water and use the restroom. So give me just one moment. Okay, Cole, you're the peanut gallery while I'm gone, so say whatever you want. Well, I mean, in this current dungeon, we have me, a uh, tank that's new, that's level 24 going into here. We have an astrologian and a samurai. And I can tell that literally everyone but the tank wants to move faster. You guys got this, but the tank's gonna lose aggro a lot. Uh huh. Don't remind me. There we go. 
Well, 46, I think. Alright, I have returned. Let me nice. just get situated here. And turn that off. There we go. Okay, let's play some triple triad real quick. <laughs> and let's use these play new. Some, let's stall the plot. <laughs> Let's use these new cards I got, including Noctis's. You can play for the glory of House Fortant, but you still won't defeat me. Oh, he's got plus. Oh, God. I'm going to have to be a little careful of that, then. All right, let's see what he's got. He's probably got, like, a bunch of three-star cards. Yeah. He's got a Hirschfont card. I want it. Okay. I want to frame it on my wall. Uh, Orion J can take that. Does he have anything that can take that? He did. But he didn't use Count Edmont to take it. Probably because I could have taken it with anything up here. Uh, I can take his Count Edmont from here, but I think this is a safer bet. Uh oh. That's not good. Um, hmm. Let's see. I have to get two back. Knock to save me. <laughs> Not to save me. He just comes out of a portal from another dimension and just throws a fucking sword at him. <laughs> uh, I think I lose here because I don't think I have anything that can take my card back or any of his. Yeah. Well, I can at least protect myself. Okay. Well, that's alright. We'll try it again at a different time. Nah, that wasn't me holding back. I think you're just a better card player than I am. I, I would like to get the Hirschfont card if I could, though. I, I don't know if it's that good, but it, it's the kind of card that I would want, so... Okay. You know what be interesting? Ma. Remember that point in Evan's Ward's story where we got Hirschfont's shield? Yeah. What if we got that as, like, a decoration for our house? 
that would be pretty cool. I would definitely stick that up on my wall for sure. Okay, well, uh, I'm probably going to take hot chocolate out of this choice of four because hot chocolate, creme brulee, almond cream croissant, and an urchin loaf. So I want all of them. I think I'm going to. You don't want the hot chocolate unless it's hot chocolate's kind of good. Unless it's I can hot white chocolate. Hot chocolate. So. It's going to really, really. Oh, you can get a painting of him? Huh. I have to keep that in mind. I don't know, though. I feel like there's a difference between putting a shield on your wall and a painting of the dude on your wall. I feel like that would be almost a little creepy. <laughs> uh, memory of a fallen comrade that you can't, that you didn't have a memento to. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, okay, cool. So what did you guys learn about our missing comrades? Oh, good. Good. Did they find anybody? Uh, sounds like they found Philamine, so that's good. That's a start. Oh, and apparently Ida and Papalimo must be around there somewhere, too, because they disposed of their Link Pearls after our escape. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, at least it seems like they're okay, so... Ah, okay, and nothing on Thancred or Minfilia yet, but that's a start. I mean, there's a few people that we can go looking for. Oh, it wasn't Graha, was it? Because he's not going to be arriving any day now. He's kind of locked behind a wall now. <laughs> huh. Maybe we will. Oh, okay. It probably has to do with the Stinian and Nidog then, so let's go... Uh... See what we can do about this. Yeah, that makes sense. Fair enough. <laughs> you are kind. You have kind of become a fixture there, haven't you, Tataru? All right, fair enough. We'll keep you uh, in the loop about what goes on when we meet with Sir Emmerich here. Okay, let's head to the Forgotten Night. Man, that lady's got a poor choice of wardrobe there. She's gonna be real cold out here. Then again, I'm walking around with an open shirt, but I at least have fists of fire. She was a scholar. She doesn't have any excuse. <laughs> that and you know. The other thing being the fact that you're a monk, you generally be warmer than other people on the account that you're, you know, always mobile and yeah, exercising, yeah. Okay, let's see what Ceramic wants. If it's urgent, it's probably something important and, you know, pressing, so. Generally, Emmerich does not waste our time. Right. Emmerich, good Thank to see you, you again. I wish to speak with you both in a place where privacy was assured. Well, you won't get more private than here, probably. We quite understand. What was it that you wished to discuss? With my father's passing, the seat of the Archbishop lies vacant. And so, in accordance with canon law, I have assumed his responsibilities. Oh, so you're like the Archbishop now? I should oh, stress that this is a temporary measure. It was never intended Archbishop that the Lord Commander Emmerich. of the Temple Knights serve in this capacity Roll the tongue as Knight Captain. <laughs> well, if it makes any difference to you, Emmerich, our first president was uh, also a military leader, and I don't think they ever intended for that to happen, so... <laughs> Quite the opposite. The statutes specify that I should surrender my powers as soon as a conclave of the senior clergy and the high houses have named a new archbishop. But in light of recent events, that would not seem appropriate. Hmm. Yeah, considering what happened with the Stinian there, and you know all the things happening as is law. I did not expect you to divulge quite so much quite so soon. The details of the archbishop's plans, perhaps. But the true origin of the war and all it entails? Oh, you actually told everybody about all that? Jeez. It's a bit of a shock to the I system, huh, Emmerich? Concerns. But when the Warrior of Light is witnessed returning to the capital upon the back of a dragon, one's <laughs> options are rather limited. Yeah, I guess I kind of tied your hands a little bit there, didn't I? Mayhap I could have concealed certain details, but for how long? And at what risk? Should the truth have come to light in the meantime, how would the people have viewed my silence? They wouldn't have trusted you, so probably better that you did tell them. 
After a thousand years of lies and secrecy, I could not well abuse their trust and hope to be believed. The time for deception has passed. Right. Fair enough. <sighs> I only wish the people agreed. Oh dear, oh dear God, God, I forgot God, about the lead in debuff. Anticipated, but not Leaden? This many. Yes. Mm. And among the few who don't walk in the sludge. Stopped, no small number question our methods. Oh, apparently a lot of people. But but they watched me come in on a dragon back. How could they deny the truth when that happened? <laughs> um, religious people will go out of their way to deny the truth. I mean, that's not just religious people. That's just <laughs> people. people who are stuck in their ways. It has already begun. You make a fair and point. that on both sides. Men and women of the cloth are being harassed in the streets. Some have even been assaulted in the broom. Wait, really? With Hilda patrolling the streets, they're getting assaulted in the broom? Hilda Jesus. and her people have formed a watch to help us maintain order. Such God, God it's like all the problems that have been tormenting Ishgard for all these years are just coming back. For in us, force. The, peace, mm. the people remain frightened and confused. For their sake, we must bring the Dragon Song War to a definitive end. Right, fair enough. So how do we go do that? And we should be glad to help you, Sir Emmerich. But what precisely would you have us do? You know, besides go murder Astinian as Needhog. We wish to treat with the dragons of Annex Trine. To that end, I would trouble you for an escort and an introduction. Oh, well, okay then. That's fair enough. I could probably get you in with Vidofnir and uh, her crew Annex pretty Trine. easy. You would speak with Vidofnir then? <laughs> We must needs open a dialogue between our peoples. Acting as my representative, Lucia will extend an invitation to their leader that she might visit us here in Ishgard. Okay. Were she still with us, I would of course have beseeched Isel's assistance in this matter. But as she is not, I must ask that you aid us in her stead. Will you do us this favor? Yeah, Isel being here would have made this a little bit easier, but I have been doing favors for the dragons with the Vath quest, so hopefully they'll trust me at least to some degree. Yeah, you got a deal. Thank you, my friends. Hey, what are friends for, Emmerich? Lucia, I leave the rest to you. Okay, off we go. Let's head to Annex Trine and see if we can't ingratiate the locals to Lucia and the presence of the Ishgardians. In the wake of the Archbishop's fall, the nation of Ishgard trembled, the faith of her people shaken to its very core. Gotta give him a kiss. He is a man of his word. Oh. True. He's doing everything in his power to make sure that the thousand that years peace is happening with the dragons. Certain of the justice of their cause, only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. What then for those brave men and women, thus stripped of their righteousness but to despair, to deny the truth and decry its speakers? Well, eventually they'll find some relief in the fact that they don't have to fight anymore, but that's a long and road off. For those whom they defamed but to hope on, to have faith in a brighter tomorrow. A tomorrow in which man and dragon might live together in harmony, then as distant as the very stars in the heavens. Well, we can only hope that by the time the patch content's over, they'll have a head start on it. I don't think it's going to happen within the time the patch content's happening, but... Yet while we dared to hope, deep within his lair, the enemy lay, gathering his strength. Oh, great. Nidhogg, now possessed of his two eyes and the body of the Azure Dragoon, prizes to which he had laid claim at the very hour of the hero's triumph. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of an obstacle to get over. As desperately as we sought the solace of peace, the great worm craved the misery of war. Nor was he alone in his misbegotten desire.
that's going to cause some problems. For sure. Okay. So, Lucia, I guess we're heading to Annex Trine then. Yeah, probably, but believe believe you me, it's not nearly as bad as you think. We've we've made the journey before, so. Ah, yeah, we should probably go tell Tataru where we're going. Okay, I'll meet you in the Forgotten Night then. I think at some point I'm going to actually start gathering up all the materials that I need for my orchestrian role, like getting all the uh, music and stuff together. I think the music is actually pretty expensive, though, um, when you purchase it, so I'm going to have to keep my eyes out, because I think most of the orchestrian roles are something like, what, 5,000 gil or something? I mean, that adds up if you get a, you know, a decent chunk of songs, but we'll see. Well, uh, we need to go to Annex trying to see if we can treat with the dragons so that they don't all kill us. Because death hurts. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay, so Ishtola is in uh, Idleshire to talk, or, well, to greet the student of Baldessian that's going to be helping us. Okay. Okay, Alfino, but let her finish her sentence. Jeez. Suddenly he's very hasty. Hmm. Alright, Tadaru, well, we'll be back. <laughs> You're not going to tell me who the student is, are you? Oh, well. We shall see. I think by the end of it, you paid like 9 million for answers. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that's not going in my orchestrian role. <laughs> We'll hear it in the in the coils though, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'll try to get him as cheap as I can. Okay, let's get our hot chocolate, keep our hands warm on the way through the Western Highlands, and uh, head out to Annex Trine. We might even just be able to go straight there though. So you need the music drops from turns five, nine, and thirteen, and then a specialist to craft it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. You need to get like. It's like the faded copies or something like that, right? And then you need to get a specialist in order to craft the actual roll. I don't even know what specialist uh, disciple that would be, but... Hmm. Right, exactly. Okay, well, if you guys are heading to Tailfeather, I'll meet you right there. I'm just gonna hop right off. Yep. Because I can return straight to Tailfeather with my uh, fancy handy dandy return spell. It's a good can thing I'm still doing the thing. good thing I'm still doing the Vath quests. Make this a little easier. Probably easier to get now. I wonder if you can um, like is the actual roll uh, is it tradable? That's what I'm wondering because if it is, then you could probably get it a little easier on the market board, but. If it's untradeable, that could make things a little more complicated. Because I'm pretty sure everyone and their mother would want copies of answers in their orchestrion role. <laughs> Probably. I know I want it in my orchestrion role. Well, they aren't going to be enemies for very long, Lucia. So. Well, she made for a good comrade, though. Yeah, well, you know. People make mistakes, Alfie Node. We just got to do the best we can to correct them going forward. That's all. You can sell the complete roll, but do you imagine the price is way higher than it should be? Oh, uh, yeah, probably, considering how inflation works on the market board. Well, I'll see how much it is, and we'll go from there. It's like six million, Gil. Yeah, I wouldn't be getting that then. <laughs> Why the hell would you pay six million gil to have something in your orchestrian role you can listen to on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's kind of why I'm sort of like, I don't know if I'm even going to have an orchestrian role, though. Like, if I'm going to gather the stuff up, it's, it's going to be like crafting. It's going to be a big money sink for me, so I could just play the songs in the background since I'm streaming them. 
or just you know mute the like if I'm playing on my own time I could just mute the sound and play them over my headphones like so I, I understand the idea of owning them yourself you have a little piece of the game where it's like you don't have to worry about outside stuff but I have to play this game online anyway so if I'm always gonna be online I'll always have access to YouTube anyway oh, maybe that's just me no it's me too Yep, take her to Annex Trine there. Alfie, you know what? I'm gonna head up there with Confucius. Is it straight to Annex Trine now? Let's see. Yeah, speaking with Vidofni right there. So, let's roll, Confucius. Should put on my uh, blindfold so the wind doesn't whip in my face. Especially with it being uh, okay. Yeah, dust storms. Definitely want the blindfold then. Don't need dust getting in my eyes while I'm flying up here. That would not be good. Nope, not at all. How are we doing on the bath quests anyway there? I think we're about halfway there. A little less than halfway. That's good. We'll be in good shape. Should be uh, next week. Probably, actually it probably will be, um, let's see. Yeah, it'll be like the beginning of next week, which will be, uh, I won't be streaming next Sunday, so it'll be next Monday that we'll be finishing the bath quests up. Um, because by that point I'll have the reputation maxed out here. And the next quest is the last quest in their quest line, so. Nice. Good shape. I think the Daphneer's on the second floor, so I'm gonna fly to my little shortcut that I found from doing. There's this one quest for the Vath where you have to uh, collect up two dinosaur eggs for one of the uh, traders for the Vath, and um, you have to transport them over to him. So, yep, the Daphneer's up here. Cool. So I learned that little shortcut where you kind of fly up and around to get to the second floor. A little easier than going up the stairs. The Daphneer, good to see you again. Yeah, I have a few friends, one of which is unfamiliar to you. She's here for an important diplomatic purpose. Yeah, he, he's looking for some peace talks. Right, yeah, that, that wasn't their smartest move. No, not at all. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a little while for people to get used to that idea, I think. Well, that's the hope. They're trying to extend a hand, Vidofnir, so... Your sire? Well, who's your sire? Oh, yeah, that could be a bit of a problem. We're trying to do the best we can about the, the Nath, but after the last Vath quest, well, I can understand Vidofnir's uh, reservations, so... Hey, little mama three, thanks for following. Appreciate that. Yeah, we we can wait a little longer, if need be. <laughs> within your within her lifetime, huh? That's a that's a long time to wait. At least she's taking it kind of alright. <laughs> well, okay, I guess that settles that then. I mean, we didn't really get an answer other than Probably IDK, but, you know. Okay, so what do we do now? I mean, yeah, you guys were in a, embro embroiled in a war with these guys for a thousand years, so. Well, we'll see. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, you, you take some time to speak to the other dragons, get to know them, because I'm sure you'll get to know them pretty well if the peace talks ever do go through. Ah, okay, I guess we're headed to Idleshire then. Probably. <sighs> yeah, so hopefully this uh, Thousand Year War will see the end soon. 
Right. Yeah, a thousand, thousand times making the journey in Heaven's Ward might be a little bit uh, upsetting. I wouldn't want to lose a thousand Hirsch fonts, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so off to Idleshire then, Alfie Node? Oh, probably. Okay. Then I will meet you in Idleshire because it's really not that far away, if I'm being honest. Matter of fact, I think it's, yeah, only 176 gil, so let me make sure that's where we're going first. Yeah, yeah, that is. Okay. Let's see here. I suppose while we're here, we could unlock the um, the Wondrous Tales quest, since I, I was going to do these later when we came here for the Miner's Guild thing, but I guess I could do them now, since we're since we're here for the main quest anyway. Let's see. We need... Why not? Something to do with your time. We need to do Arms Wide Open and Keeping Up with the Aliopos. So I think this guy is the first one. Uh, yes, yes he is, and he'll get me the access to the wondrous tales, so that's fine. He's got a shite-eating grin, huh? Oh boy. I wonder why. Oh boy. Well, I've been running around Idleshire for the better part of weeks now. I don't know what the hell you expected. I mean, I've passed you probably a number of times on my way to getting Shire gear, and probably a number more times turning in my gatherer scripts. Good lord. Okay, what kind of task? Alright, don't patronize me, man. Just tell me what you need doing. Yeah, who's Chloe Poe? Oh, okay, Chloe Alia Poe. Okay. Of course you haven't. Uh, of course you haven't. Uh, oh boy. What did I just get myself into? Let's go check in with this Chloe lady. Uh, is she outside of the thing? Looks like she's on the outside of this thing. Uh, let's go look. And I think that quest over there, that red one, is yeah, arms wide open. That's the one for crafters and gatherers, so we'll get to that one in a moment. I'll just switch over to miner for that. You must be Chloe. I've been told to seek you out. Hello there. Well, uh, my name's Jimmy. You might know me and you might not. Man, news travels, news and stories travel fast around here, don't they? I imagine Midnight Dew might have, and Slow Fix might have something to do with this, though. Oh, really? Oh, well, that's not good. Well, I'm glad you're helping her out, then. I don't know about that. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. We do go to a lot of different places, so that'll give you some new material to work with. Own stones? Uh huh. Oh, I don't need your Mandragora pin. You keep that. That's I'm sure that's pretty important to you. Okay, so she's given us a wondrous tales book. I I get it, yeah. A very good pun, but whatever. Let's let's not talk this kid down, you know. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, Okay, then. I don't know how to take that from a little kid, but thank you, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so this quest will unlock the wondrous tales for us, and that will allow us to... Well, it'll explain it here. So yeah, basically the tales will give us uh, different quests every time we get a book from her. I think you can get them like once weekly or something like that. Uh, yeah, a yeah, new journal will be made available every week. So you do the things in the, qu in the uh, tales book, and you can... Uh, 
basically you put down, it's like seals or something like that, and you can mark down the different things that she has us doing in the book. Yeah, so there's 16 squares, four columns, and four rows, and if you do the things that she tells you to do in the books, you get a mark on the square, and you can mark up to nine squares. If you get lines in a row or column or a diagonal, then you can bring them back here to her for rewards. So. There may be spoilers in it. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Hopefully there won't be that many spoilers. I heard that um, the book gets expanded for Stormblood, though, so I, I, I'm hoping that the spoilers are limited to it, but we'll see. Maybe I just won't look at it for now. But yeah, and her stuff, like most stuff in this game, resets on Tuesdays, so it actually kind of coincides pretty well with your... Um, with your challenge log, so. Alright, let's just, uh, I guess let's just have a look at it. Hopefully there aren't that many spoilers in it. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway. So yeah, so if you get the nine uh, seals done, you can get a map and an Alien Platinum piece, which is probably worth a decent chunk of money. We can get an MGP card and some Mahachi Manor if we get a line. If we get two lines, we get a wind-up Chloe. Okay, fair enough. And these silver certificates, from what I understand, can be traded in for a couple of decent things. Like, I think you can trade these in for Mahachi Demi Matter or something like that. Um, I think the gold certificate is the one you trade in for the cracked crystals. And those cracked crystals are the things you can trade in for, um, what's it called? Uh, the the good crafting and gathering materia that Cole and I were hoping to sell on the market board that we cannot do right now. <laughs> so, and MGP Platinum card. Okay. Well, there's some decent rewards here. Nothing too great, I guess, but eh, it's probably worth. I'll probably end up just doing a few of these things just offhand anyway. So, so we need to do a level one to forty nine dungeon, a level fifty dungeon, a level fifty one to fifty nine dungeon, a sixty dungeon, Circus Tower. Uh, that is, I think that's a part of the, um, the Alliance Raids for Heaven's Ward. Uh, parts of Alexander, Palace of the Dead, the Naval Extreme, the Horror Eater Extreme, Akafa Amphitheater for Shiva Extreme. That's probably spoilers. Uh, that's probably spoilers. We could go, we're gonna go in the coil, so we might do that one. I think the final coil is a different one, though. Um, that's like a, an extreme version of it or something, or savage version of it. And some PvP stuff. So there's a decent chunk of different things you can do there, and uh, I would assume that you get points from doing tasks and getting seals that you can then use on second chance to change up the stuff that's in this thing. So it's, uh, it's a, a, a decent little system. Um, I, I probably won't be, like, completing this as like a, I won't be trying to complete it basically is what I'm trying to say. I'll be completing it if I get to it and if I don't, well, whatever, it doesn't matter each week. It's just, all it's gonna get me is some, that particular thing will at the best get me just a bunch of like Mahachi matter, which I, I really couldn't care less about because I've already got, uh, I've already got all of my gear materialed out for what I want. And if you look in my uh, Chocobo saddlebag, I'm already, uh, stockpiling level six materia for when we get to Stormblood. I, I get a cracked cluster for doing adventure and need bonuses with the leveling roulette. So if I do that once daily, I will have enough of the materia that I need for my Stormblood stuff within a couple of months. And I have, I mean, I, I've got the rest of, uh, you know, I've got May, basically the rest of May, and I don't know if I'm gonna keep my subscription into June, probably, but we'll, we'll see. But the point is, is that I've got plenty of time with which to do that stuff, so, you know. Um, actually, I might go to Leatherworker for this one, because Leatherworker is the class that I'm not really gaining as much experience on. Granted, I'm getting 60% of my level on Leatherworker once a week, but it is once a week. Minor, I can just go hit things and get my levels in, so whatever. Alright, Gaimelana, what do you have to say? So this is arms wide open. And this one will get us, I think it gets us something similar, like it gets us access to custom deliveries or something. I'm going to find out right now. Well, I'd like to believe I've done a lot for you guys in terms of collections. <laughs> oh, okay, what kind of favor? The Ultima thing is like an EX fight? Oh, okay, gotcha. So so it's like the it's like the extreme version of the Ultima weapon then. Got it. 
I know a Chloe Leopo. I don't know that I know a Zloe Leopo. I don't think that's how you pronounce that. It's probably slow, but you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So you want me to go stick by her then, huh? Okay. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Where is she, anyway? Looks like she's off in that direction somewhere. Ah, okay, she's over at the uh, house by Midnight Dew there. Or Midlight Dew? Midnight Dew, yep. Well, one past it, basically. So let's go check in on the other half of the family. So you must be Zloe. Uh, I mean, sure, of course you're famous. That's, that's, you know. <laughs> you, you have the last name for it. Well, I've been told by uh, Gemlana out there that I should uh, help you with your little expedition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I see where the scatterbrain thing comes in. <laughs> Oh, an orphanage, huh? Okay. Oh, boy. So what do you need my help with? I'm just a crafter and a gatherer, but I can probably do something. Yeah, those are luxuries. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so how are we going to get more gill in your coffers so you can actually eat? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know about marrying a prince there, lady. You're going to have to be careful which prince you marry. Uh, if, if this is anything like the, the equivalent family in real life, the prince that she married was uh, a bit of a crackpot, but that's just my opinion. I like his music, but at the same time, he's a bit of a nut job. <laughs> just a tad, fam. Oh, okay, fair enough. I do need the scripts in order to outfit my uh, leather worker, and I will need yellow scripts in order to outfit both miner and leather worker if I get them uh, higher on levels, like get them closer to 70. Oh, were you? Well, that's that's good. Um, I'd like to believe I'm good friends with Rowena at this point for all I've done for her, but I don't think I've even ingratiated myself to her at this point. I don't know that I've made a scratch, so... Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Do it for the children. Fine. <laughs> you better be careful there, Zoe. If uh, Rowena finds out you're kind of making like a competitive edge against her there, she might run you out of business. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes, you did. <laughs> so yeah, we, we won't get any gill out of this, but we will get scripts that we can use for other things, so that should help a little bit. <laughs> I probably won't be getting many gatherer scripts because I already have my miner completely outfitted. And that's how everyone gets you, the children. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> they just know the way, to, the way to get at me there. They're just like, do it for the kids. You're the warrior of light. You have to do it for the kids. Fine. Uh, I guess that is a pretty relevant question. That's a lot of scripts there, Zloe. I... I think you're gonna need more than... D does diabetes exist in Final Fantasy Universe? Because I'm pretty sure if all you eat slash drink is pineapple juice, you're gonna get the Final Fantasy equivalent of diabetes. So. I mean, she is a kid, but that's no excuse. Gosh. Oh, really? Okay, well, where am I gonna get access to Near Eastern... Oh, we get both of these. Okay, cool. Well, I know where I'm gonna get access to Near Eastern cultural stuff, but uh, that's probably not for a little while yet.
But yeah, custom deliveries have now been unlocked, so we can do these to get experience in a similar way that we can get stuff, uh, rewards for doing the Wondrous Tales. We can also do custom deliveries in order to um, get access to some stuff for our crafters and gatherers. Let's see what kind of deliveries she needs. Well, let's learn about custom deliveries while we're here. Okay, there's a ton of stuff to look at. I don't know anything about this, so I guess we're going to look at it a little bit. But let's let's just look at this and see if I can puzzle this out. Okay, so we can craft things, gather things, or fish for things. And I'm not a fisher, so we won't be doing that last one. And yeah, we need to make them collectible, just like some of the other stuff that I've been gathering previously. Uh, not high quality, you need to use the actual collector's uh, ability in order to do that. And I am above level 55, so that should make this a little easier. Nice. And yeah, it, you don't get yellow scripts to outfit your crafters and gatherers with top tier gear from Stormblood until you're level 70 in their corresponding class. So I won't be getting yellow scripts anytime soon, but the experience that I get there will more than make up for it. So it's, it's fine. I'll be able to, using this, I'll be able to get minor to 70, probably before we're finished with the Stormblood main scenario. So... <laughs> You know, I figured that's the point. You're supposed to have your class to 70 by the end of Stormblood. Cough, cough, your Dark Knight. Well, yeah, my Dark Knight and Scholar are halfway to 70 currently, so... And I don't mean halfway as in, like, the level 35. They're halfway on level 69 to 70, so... Listen, Matter of fact, they might be farther. I kept all my classes low level so I could get the full experience. You over there! <laughs> I'm still outfitted with level 60 gear, though, so it's not that much different. What makes it harder to decline is if they show you the children, like literally the kids are right there wondering if you're going to help. Yeah, that does. That makes it really hard to decline. It's like, oh, man, you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, okay, so I can get the materials necessary to craft the items from the material supplier. Okay, that'll make things a little easier. And yeah, the, the gathering stuff you can gather out in the field. For fish and fishing holes, well, you'd have to be a fisher. Okay, well, I know how to do collectability, but... So she's looking for a Near Eastern Antique from Disciples of the Hand. A dated uh, Rad's Athan coin. It's grayed out, so I can't get it there. And then uh, for Disciples of the Land. And then a Thavnarian leaf. That's what that looks like for fishermen. <laughs> Well, you can get crafter scripts and gatherer scripts out of this, so these should be pretty good. It needs to be 55 collectability from Leatherworker for that. And I would assume this bar up at the top here increases as you make more deliveries for Zloe. Um, I would assume she gets happier with your progress as you go. I don't know exactly what the little... Like, it looks like when you fill up five hearts, you you get something out of it, but I, I could be wrong. I'll, I'll learn more about this as I go, and I'll let you guys know how it all goes. We can make six deliveries a week, though, so that'll make things a little better. Uh, this gets, so her satisfaction bar is up here, so this gets us 30 satisfaction with her if we do this. We get some money out of it, lots of experience, and then, uh, some scripts. And, obviously, you want to go for the highest level of collectability if you can, so you can get the maximum amount of scripts. Uh, let's see, I can search this by crafting method, too. Oh, okay, so yeah, it's just by the components, kind of like with um, the Ixal quest that we did for the Ikotl 9. You get the components together, you get the crystals together, these are pretty easy to gather, too. Um, I, I make it sound like it's hard to gather these all up, but they're, it's really mindless. You just walk around back and forth and get this stuff together, so it's, it should be pretty simple. Well, I've found a way to level up Leatherworker besides the once-a-week thing now, so that's pretty good. Uh, this dated one, where can I gather this up at? Ah, uh, okay, so it's just the ones that you gather in the hinterlands. All right, gotcha. And I haven't, um, I haven't gotten the stuff for regional folklore yet for either of these classes, or for mining there. I could have gotten them in order to fill out my mining achievements and get 150 unique things for my mining achievements, um, and it would have gotten me a pickaxe that's as good as the one that I have right now at eye level 200, but it would have required me to... Um, it would have required me to get like 150 more blue gatherer scripts than I got previously. So I was like, that's just not going to happen. That's way too many for me to go farming for. I would have still been that trying to get like that. So. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that once we get to Stormblood, I can get those seven unique collectibles like that because there's a bunch of unique collectibles between level 61 and 65 available in Stormblood. So it's, it's really not that hard. 
Okay, well, I'll let you guys know how all this stuff goes. I'll probably dabble in it a little bit occasionally. I can only make six deliveries a week, though, so I, I gotta manage it a little bit, but it'll probably end up mostly being crafting stuff, but a we'll see. A positive experience for your crafter. Let's see. Another time, another... Oh, that's the, uh, that thing. Okay. So where can I get these materials from? They said... Let's see. In Freewalk's round spot, which I think is right here. What's this quest? The Favors of the House. Uh, Gimlona, you have dealings with the House of Splendors. Oh no, I know how to do that stuff. Uh, Junkmonger, maybe Scrap Salvager. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. <laughs> hmm. What about you? Ah, here we go. Okay, so you can make the things with these components. All right, well, let's, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Why the hell not? Uh, let's go to my search history, though. Okay. So to make the Near Eastern Antique, we need two Near Eastern Antique components. So we get the materials for it, make the component, and then we make the antique. Okay. I see. So this is, this is the component materials. Okay. So we need two of these then, right? Let's see. Let's see, so we need one of those to make a component. And we need two components to make these, so therefore we need two component materials. All right. Yeah, this is this is a lot easier than buying things on the market board by the looks of it. Nice. And, um, well, let's see what these different soups that she gave me do. Let's see. This one's for crafters, and this one's for gatherers. All right, well, I'll hold on to those. They might come in handy somewhere. Should probably drink this hot chocolate, though. It's it's a little cold out here in the driving rain. Hot chocolate in the driving rain. Oh, dear. Nice. Oh, it gave me some HP. Cool. Not that I need it, but, you know. All right, let's see if we can find a not rainy spot to make these things. Getting water in your leather doesn't seem like such a good idea to me. That doesn't sound like a good idea at all. But yeah, I mean, you guys saw the amount of experience this should give. It gave like 580,000 experience, and I only need 4.4 million, so that's only like nine things. Granted, I can't do them that often during the week, but it, this is... Crafting and gathering are kind of a thing that I just do on the side for a little bit of time each day, so this is like perfect, because it, it just uh, lets me do things at the pace that I'm already doing them, basically. So, all right. So we need two, four and eight, and then uh, four wind crystals. Okay, let's give this a shot, shall we? All right, so we probably want to get this to fairly high quality so that we can, uh, you know, make things as high quality as we can. Uh, let's do this. Um, I'll probably do a waste knot as well, so let's do some great strides. I'm gonna have to burn the great strides in a minute if I don't get a good condition. Yeah, I gotta burn that Great Strides now, so let's do a big one. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Now let's do some medium touches, and eventually we'll use uh, Burgett's Brow here to capstone the thing in just a minute. So, uh, probably after this touch. Let's see. Yeah, definitely after this touch, because I got a good, so. Now, Burgett's Brow, because I'm a specialist leather worker, has a 100% success rate. Normally, it only has a 70% success rate, but since I became a specialist, it's now 100%. Now, as for that 404, well, we can do about 350 of it, I think, with a uh, standard synthesis. But if you're getting to the point where the progress bar needs to go up to, like, six or 700, I would recommend using... Name of Earth, because what you can do with it is it gives you, for five turns, it gives you access to Brand of Earth right here. Now, that's not fully guaranteed. It's only a 90% success rate even with Steady Hand, but if you get it, well, it gives 600 uh, points to, towards your progress. So it's, it's pretty ridiculous how good it is. And you get a bunch of experience for doing that, too. Like, look at that. I got 37,000 just for crafting the component material. So that's pretty good. Needless to say, the, the crafting thing is still going strong for me. I know I keep saying I'm not going to do it anymore because it's such a money sink, but, well, now it's not a money sink anymore. I can buy the materials for cheap, and I can turn them in occasionally once, like, once a day, basically, for a week, and uh, go from there. 
So what I'm saying is my crafting and gathering stuff is my side hustle from killing primals and other things. Yeah, this is where I make all my money, Conquer, basically. <laughs> all that primal killing stuff, it doesn't pay very well. <laughs> it pays good in XP. It pays good in XP, yeah, but it doesn't pay good in gill. So here's where the gill comes from. This is where we get the money rolling in. Um, that's a good... So I'm... Hmm. Let's do a big touch there. Since it's good. Yeah, now we can burn our burgets and we're good to go. Yep, there we go. And I'll just show you, we can still do this on standard synthesis even as well. Because, yeah, see, there you go, 300. So we'll do that and we'll do this. And we're done with it. High quality. Sweet. All right, Conker, take it easy. See you later, Conker. Hope you get done with that Java homework that you got pretty soon. Hopefully it's not going to give you a hard time again. But yeah, as you can see, we've already got a high level of uh, high quali of quality here because we had high quality components to work with. This is good. I like this system because it, it means that I can level these uh, classes up without having to worry too much about them. And it'll make it easier to get my crafter scripts for Leatherworker because I'm... Right now, I'm relying on a 40% proc for my adventurer squadrons once a day. So if I can turn one of these things in once a day as well, well, more power to me, basically. Uh, we only need to get this to 382 on the quality thing. So uh, that was an excellent, but I wouldn't have burned that excellent anyway. It would have been a bit too big of a risk, I think. So I need to do this. And we don't use a step using our collector's synthesis thing. So uh, that should help a little bit. But let's, let's burn this uh, great strides. There we go. We're almost at the collectability now, so that's fine. We'll just do the similar thing that we were doing a minute ago, where we just burn our burgets once we're down on Steady Hand. Like, Steady Hand will get down to one turn, and so we'll waste not in a second, so we'll just burn our burgets here. And, uh, yeah, that gets us pretty close. Um, I'm gonna need another Steady Hand. Let's see. I need another Steady Hand. So 22 and 32 is 54, plus 15 is 69 points, plus 6 is 75. And then I'll probably also need 15 more for a standard synthesis, so that's 90. So we should be fine if I do this. Let's do that and do this to get the quality maxed out. I don't need it maxed out, but, uh, you know, I'm already there at this point, so might as well. Name of Earth. Let's brand it. Nice. And then this. And there you go. There's a high quality collectible. Pretty easy. I mean, I, I'm outfitted pretty well to do this stuff, but oh my god. <laughs> oh, you know how that Regalia was racing next to you, Cole? Yeah. Somebody just drove theirs up the stairs and into me when I was running out of Rowena's house in <laughs> Idleshire. <laughs> I just saw that on screen. I was like, oh no! It's a good thing ragdolling also, isn't a thing in this game, because holy shit. <laughs> I should also probably mention my bar's level 46. Oh, hell, man. I, wor I was working go, while you were doing story stuff. Go work on your Beast Tribe stuff, and you'll get it to 47 today. I already did. Oh, nice. I'm halfway through my hunting log. Nice. I did everything I could today, except for that one freaking fate that you have to do for the Sahagans that you have to kill that guy, because that guy is a fucking damage sink. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we can turn this in, and like it said here, you only need 382 collectability to get it to work, and it's going to give us a like pretty good chunk of experience. Three and so. a half levels, and I'll be level 50 on Bard, and then I just run every single one of my roulettes daily with Bard, and then, you know, I'll be 60 in no time. Pretty much, yep. And I can go through the patch content as a Bard. <laughs> <laughs> that will help. Going through the patch content as a DPS is usually uh, better, because that way you don't got to wait, you know, wait through all the queues. That, you know, it gives me time to practice my rotations. Well, hopefully it fetches a decent chunk of money for you, because it just fetched me a decent chunk of experience, so... You went in to fix that shit. I did. I, I made it max collectability. I didn't have to, but I did anyway. And we got 140 crafter scripts out of it, so that's really nice. That, that'll Ooh. buy me a few goblin cups and a few blue crafter scripts. So that's good. This will make it a lot easier to outfit Leatherworker and I-200 gear. Also, I just realized something. Oh, okay. On my way to fixing up uh, Bard when I start doing uh, main roulettes again, mm -hmm. 
I can just like straight up all use all those tombstones and just be like, oh, hey, I'm just going to get an entire ironwork set for you and then just run from 50 to 60 with that. Yep. And then by the time I get up to 60, you're like, oh, hey, I have enough tombstones for a full shire set. Would you look at that? Yep. Just be careful with um, leveling when you start to get up to levels like 56 through uh, 59 because you'll start getting stuff that the ironworks gear isn't as good for. But you're on a tank, so it won't affect you as much, but just be careful of it, basically. Hmm. Okay, so as we increase uh, Zloe's satisfaction level with our uh, goods there, we can learn more about her, so that's good. So she's probably got like a story, basically, that goes on here, so maybe we'll come back here when I max out her satisfaction at each level. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, so those antiques aren't too bad to craft. They don't cost very much, and I can get tons of EXP out of it, so that's pretty good. I'll just do it like once a day or something on Leather Worker while I'm... Because I'm going to be coming to Idleshire anyway um, when I do my leveling roulette once a day. Um, because I need to get that crack uh, cluster that I got and turn it in uh, for a level 6 materia. My current rotation basically when I get on during the day, it takes about an hour. It's um, I start in Limsa, I, do, I uh, send my adventure squadrons on a mission. Then I go to Tailfeather and do my Vath quests. Then I do my leveling roulette. Um, then I turn in my crack cluster up here with these guys. Why am I going this way? I need to repair. There's that pink chair again. <laughs> I don't know what that mount is, but I want it. <laughs> it looks like the Mad Hatter's chair from Alice in Wonderland. That's wonderful. So yeah, then I come here to turn in my cracked cluster. Um, up there, by the, uh, the machinery factory up there. And then, uh, if I got any crafter scripts out of the gentlemen uh, in my adventurer squadrons, I go over to the marketplace over there and I turn them in. Uh, so it, it's a bit of a rotation, and then uh, I'm pretty much done at that point, but I usually will go to an inn or something after that, uh, close to where I need to be for the stream. So, um, But now I actually have an additional step in my rotation, which is turn in any crafter scripts I get from the adventurer squadrons and also go over to Zloe and get the components for the stuff that she needs for her deliveries. So it'll add about five minutes to my rotation, but considering the experience I can get out of it, it seems like a pretty fair trade, I think. Anyway, now that we've taken a 30-minute break to go crafts shit, let's actually talk to Ishtola and see who this uh, scholar is. Well, I was delayed, but I was here while I was delayed, so... <laughs> uh, I mean, as well as can be expected, considering there was an a thousand-year war. Yeah. Oh, that's what she meant. She has to discuss with Race Felg here. Okay. I wasn't aware. I guess that should have made, been, you know, something that I figured into, but... Uh, I probably wasn't paying enough attention. Oh! Okay, sure. So she'll be out on the front bridge. Is the front bridge still in town? Yes, yes it is. Okay. I was thinking I'd have to go out to um, Big West Shortstop or something. I still love that as a name of a little town or a stop-off point. <laughs> the goblins, they make such funny names. Okay, let's see who this Charlayan Scholar is, and then I think after that we'll call it a day. Alright. So this is the third quest in the 3.1 content call, I think, if I if I did the math correctly. Um, but by the time you get back, you're going to want to be done with all of 3.1, because we will be done with all of 3.1 by the time you're back. Excuse me. Oh, hello, who's this? Is this our Charlayan scholar? I'm terribly, terribly sorry oh, to nice. have kept you all waiting. Man, they really doubled down on the cat ear hood thing with Kryle, didn't they? You need not apologize. We arrived but a moment ago ourselves. I mean, that is one of her most iconic outfits from Final Fantasy V, but this is not that Kryle. This is a different Kryle. Pray, allow me to introduce Kryle, who has recently come from the Charlayan motherland. She has generously offered to assist us. Well, that was nice of you. Thanks for the help. I oh, don't please, even know where to start. Of it. A trip to Eorzea was long overdue. You must be the warrior of light. Almost done. Yes. You certainly do look yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> a pleasure to meet you at last, sir. Yeah, pleasure to meet you too. 
And who is that I spy but young Alpha No Levy Year himself? I dare say someone's grown an ill or two in my absence. Or are those lifts in your boots? <laughs> we, um. <clears throat> Miss Croyle and I met at the studium years ago. I shall forever be indebted to her for her sage guidance. Is that all you're indebted to her for, Alfie Nod? Are you sure? It was no small task keeping him out of trouble, believe you me. The youngest ever to enter the studium. Him and his sister, 11 year old prodigies. And they're like, uh. <laughs> That's that's some uh, prestige. They're getting into a, basically a college at that age. It's pretty impressive. Suffice it to say, social graces were not among his list of talents. Wah, wah. Striding up to his seniors on his first day, head held high. What was it he said again? Thank you, Kryl. <laughs> I'd rather not remember those days. <laughs> Got something to hide, Alfie Node. Would you care to attempt a more dexterous deflection? <laughs> Damn it, I missed it on stream. I wanted to see what the hell was said. Also, freaking Alpha Node's pose. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, Alpha Node? Caddy or Hood got your tongue? A bit much. I <laughs> <laughs> you've been putting your skills to use here in Eorzea. Henceforth, I trust you will dazzle me with your eloquence at the first time of asking. <laughs> She's got his number, man. I'll tell you what. Wah, wah. What are we gonna do with these two, huh, Ishtola? Right. On to more pressing matters. Finding Minfilia and the other missing scions. I gather you have new information to share with us. A new approach, actually. Oh. Tataru recounted the tale of your escape, and it gave me an idea. Can't wait until they put that outfit on the Mog Station. I'm surprised it's not on there already, considering how iconic it is. It's kind of a shock. Simply put, assuming Thancred left some manner of trail when you whisked him away, as is almost always the case with teleportation magics, I am confident I can find and follow it. Oh, okay, cool. Then what are you waiting follow the for? ether. Alfie, no, didn't she so say... Little to do it. Oh, okay. The fact is, my abilities aren't quite up to the task. Not in themselves, anyway. If I had Master Matoya's crystal eye, on the other hand... So that's what you want us to do, is go see then if we can pry the crystal eye from Montoya. I think it best that you explain your plan to her in person. Normally you're supposed to give it back to her, not take it away from her. <laughs> okay. So it's another field trip to Matoya's cave then. Alright, fair enough. We'll show her the way. It's a bit of a walk, but that's okay. Because we'll make it as we proceed with our plan to find Thancred and the other Scions. Hopefully, the Aether Trail that she's looking for is not terribly difficult to find, but I'm sure Matoya will have the answers, because she always does, and um, hopefully she will share them with us on the next episode of Final Fantasy XIV, The Stream Edition, when we will be uh, heading to Matoya's cave. I'll probably meet you guys there, since I can save in there without it being like, are you sure you want to leave here? Or, well, not save, but, you know, uh, turn the game off there. But I'll, I'll just stay here for now until then. So, yes, we will be back on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, in order to continue our quest to find our missing Scion friends. Thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Switch and YouTube to check out the stream. And I will see all of you on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time when we continue. Until then, thank you, take care, and have a good night. Peace.